Let's start with George and then we'll go to Katie and let's see what he says because he's apparently responding to the post she put out. So I'm kind of hoping he talks about a lot of it and then we can go and fact check what he maybe missed. For those of you who don't know, Katie Boggs recently did a stream and accused me of something very serious. I made a response and then she made a follow up response. For him to say like she accused me of something very serious, I think we were still a little bit confused about what the seriousness was because she was very vague. And I think I'm still very confused about what he literally did to her. So I can't, I still don't understand. Did he just touch her waist or did he touch anything else? Because I heard conflicting arguments coming from Twitter where some people were like, no, he like touched her very sexually. And then some people were like, no, he just touched her waist. And I don't know who's, I don't know what it is. So hopefully we get some clarification in this video. This is my response to her follow-up. Throughout this video, I'm going to be showing clips from some other people just for context. And just to make it clear, I don't want any hate to be sent to anyone, including these people. Here are yeah. the two tweets that I posted about the situation. These are now deleted as I only made them to let people know that I had intentions to make a response. So the two tweets he had put out, I had seen them, right? Uh, the original one was like, hey, very serious stream today. And then that's the video we watched. And then the follow up was since reading Katie's new newest post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information that I was not aware of at all before. Interesting. I think it relates to the bracelet stuff. Let's see. I have much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I am sorry. I am so sorry. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact that you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. So this is what we're watching now. I deleted as I only made them to let people know that I had intentions to make a response. And I didn't want people to think I was just completely radio silent in the time that I needed to make those responses. First of all, um, two of you are saying it was waste and stomach and no one has come out with any further description of anything worse happening okay because that's that's the thing is like i feel like i can't tell if they're all very young a part of them is definitely blowing everything out of proportion but then i obviously would love to move more towards a society that asks for explicit consent so i'm kind of excited about that being possibly the result of this happening and i guess it's good that the worst that happened is that there was some touching on the waist but obviously people were hurt by it and those feelings are valid but let's also talk about maybe the good that can come out of this, maybe asking more explicit consent. And then understanding that even though it, asking explicit consent can help remove a lot of the pain and suffering that happens in unconsensual situations, it doesn't always guarantee that it will be painless because some people consent to things they're not ready for. That's just a reality of like adulting, right? Or they consent to things and then they don't feel that comfortable. But let's see what, what George has to say, right? Well, I just want to make it clear that my tweet that I put out after my first statement wasn't somehow admitting to guilt or completely backtracking on what I originally said. My perspective had changed due to new information that Katie had provided. So okay. now I'm just going to go over Katie's new statement and okay. talk about what she had to say. So first, she acknowledges the texts that I showed about them talking about wanting to play the drinking games are real, but that they were from her friends. So this is reasonable. Okay, so now she's saying that I didn't send those my friends did. I, th I have a feeling Katie's going to put a lot of the responsibility on her friends, which to be fair, 19, you're kind of dumb. All 19 year olds are stupid. So to be fair, you're going to have like, not literally, but like you're going to have kind of a relationship with like letting your friends maybe make the decisions for you, which just means she's got bad friends maybe, or maybe they're just young and innocent and they didn't mean, and you know, there's a lot of, that. It's the idea is like who is malicious here and how, how much of this is just an accident? More. I only brought up that point because the implication was that it was kind of creepy of us and we were forcing the game on them. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously complied. In reality, it was mutually talked about and everyone was just having fun. So next she mentions that one of the reasons she wanted to hang out in our hotel room was because there was another creator that was in the room. But then that creator didn't actually end up being there. Again, reasonable. I didn't know this at the time. There were people in and out of our hotel room throughout the whole event, so she could have potentially heard of anyone being there. When her group was on the way to the hotel, she was messaging me, bantering about whether or not I would actually be there or not. And that made me think that she wanted me to be there. But I don't know, maybe she didn't care and she just wanted to see the other creator or just to be with her friends. Next, she shows our Instagram DMs and she said that a reason she kept messaging me in a friendly way for a while after this whole thing happened was because, and this is a quote, she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while. Now, now, I will say 
I do think we should take this into account just because grown ass adults also have this problem around like celebrities. He's got 10 million followers on his regular channel and 1 million on his secondary channel. And I will say that that tends to go to people's heads. People are very shallow. They think like your followers matters and then they treat you differently because of it. Ela Klein told a story about a hairdresser and how she'll be on Instagram and then the hairdressers will be like, oh, tag me in your posts. We could do a hair photo together. And then they'll see how many followers Ela has and they'll treat her completely differently. I think it's really normal for people to do that. So I think there's something to be said about that as well. I will say that I'm not surprised, but it does even happen with adults. Like, I mean, Katie is an adult. She's 19. But I mean, I've seen like 40 year olds freak out because they're meeting a celebrity. So, I mean, to be frank, it's not really the age at that point. It's really how you're going to treat other people, which also does suck because the downside of fame is that no one treats you like a person because you're always just someone's pop, you're someone's avenue towards clout which paints Katie in a bad light because now it looks like Katie's just in it for clout, which to be fair, if she's intimidated by somebody with a large audience, then you know what I mean? If you know a celebrity is like you're treating them on a pedestal and you're excited to meet them, then you are kind of admitting that you don't see them as a person, which means, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like you're not seeing them as a consciousness. You're not seeing them as like a real person. You're seeing them as a celebrity, which means you objectified him first. Which means, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Now, this is not something that I was thinking about at all. I wasn't aware that she ever watched my content in the past. That was never brought up. I've never, know. I wouldn't know this guy. I remember when I first met a YouTuber with a pretty good following and another YouTuber introduced us. I was at like a party. And they were like, oh, my gosh, like, um, this is Brittany Simon. Um, do you know who this is? And I was like, no, I don't know who you are. And she was like, oh, you don't know who I am? And I was like, no. And then I realized who it was. And I was like, oh, you made a video I liked once. And she goes, oh, cool. Like, these people have the biggest fucking egos. Not him necessarily, but so many YouTubers are like, you know, you don't know who I am. Another YouTuber did the same thing in the same kind of group of people. He was like, you don't know who I am. And I was like, or no. Actually, the YouTuber that introduced us was like, oh, she knows your stuff. I was like, yeah, I know your stuff. He goes, oh, what's your favorite video? I was like, I don't have like a favorite video. I don't watch you like that, girl. You know, I don't watch it like that. And he was like, oh, he, their egos are so fragile, bro. They're so into, essays are so into themselves. Let me tell you. They're so into themselves. They're like, what do you mean you don't know who I am? And I was like, cringe. But also I get it because they've convinced themselves they're somebody because they have like a million followers. Or they convince themselves Humility is key, guys. Okay, so same thing with like George, right? Is George being approached by Katie because he's a person or because she wants in on the celebrity gossip? Because if she's saying she's intimidated by how many followers he has, she should never have engaged with him if she couldn't see him as a person. This actually makes me feel pretty bad. The only reason she was messaging me was because I have subscribers or something. I would never want that. Again, the only reason I actually brought up us messaging after the fact was to show that we were still friendly afterwards. And yeah. that I didn't know that she was uncomfortable at the time. She also confirms that we did talk on Snapchat, like I said, but also that nothing really happened there either. The next thing she talks about is the elevator. She said that we left at the same time and that her hotel room was on the other side of the hotel. So there was like kind of two corridors connected by uh, an elevator room in the middle. So she's saying that she was just going past the elevator to get to her room. And again, this is totally reasonable. I brought this up because from her stream, the way that it was told kind of implied that I followed her out and then that she waited to take the next elevator instead of getting in with me while I tried to convince her to get in. I'll just play the clip of her saying this, so I'm not speaking for her. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. In my original video, I just wanted to clarify this, that we left together um, because the night was over and that she was on the same floor. So she didn't actually have to take the elevator. And it seems like she agrees with us now. So next she agrees mm. with me that she didn't mention my online friend that I just met that day. She said she didn't mention him though because he left up. There was a man who was left out, who I left out. He wasn't there for long. He left early, which is why I didn't mention him. I didn't even know his name. But here's the message from the guy. I've never spoken to him. This is simply a message he sent to someone who was in the room that night too. And it all 
And it is all he really has in the situation. He left before anything happened. Ollie and he didn't even know his name. And she shows a text message that she sent. Never spoken to with him. This is simply a message he sent. The message was, I'm currently watching George 26 cuddle with Katie 18. Someone who was in the room. Okay. A little uncomfortable. Um, But there's technically nothing. on. I mean, at 19, I was cuddling with people in their 30s. And I don't, I don't regret any of those decisions. They're not the most upstanding people. But like, I'm not, I'm not in regret of any of those decisions, right? Um, so personally, like, I don't think it's a big deal for a 19 or 18 year old to have sex with somebody in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I think what's more weird is like the kind of relationship you have with that kind of age gap. It's not the actions. I could understand somebody who's 18, 19, 20, wanting to have a sexual short-lived relationship with somebody with a huge age gap. What's weirder to me is wanting to date people with a huge age gap. So that's my line. Like my line is like, why would you want to have a romantic relationship with somebody who's that young? Because that's your saying that's your peer in like an intellectual way. But sex doesn't take intellect. You don't have to be smart to have sex. I mean, you just want to fuck. You know what I mean? So I feel like for me, it's not the fucking. It's the it's the it's the long term stuff. But then I can understand a situation in which an 18 year old or 19 year old is more likely to be taken advantage of regardless of anyone they look up to. Right. So I could see I could see both. I could see any situation occurring. It just depends on the individual in the situation. Says is from him from the night where this happened, where he says this. Obviously, this is implying that he was kind of uncomfortable with what was happening. And also that he in different morals, people have different values. Right. So I could get that Her age, despite just meeting her. And when I first saw this, this actually majorly changed my perspective on the night because that would mean that my friend was also uncomfortable and somehow knew her age when I didn't. And even though she hmm. said that he left early, my memory of it was actually that he was the last to leave just before me and Katie left. Dream also came to me and mentioned that this changed his perspective of the night as well hmm. because that would mean that he was essentially the only person that wasn't uncomfortable and that therefore he should have known. This really concerned me. Mm. I kind of was just sitting there like really thinking how how could this have happened? So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it. And it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. I'm going to play oh. a phone call oh. Oh. that I had with him after I found this he out. Said the friend didn't? Didn't give... He said the friend didn't send the message? And he's going to play a phone call with the friend? <gasps> Did Katie fake the text message? No, Katie. No. Katie didn't send this message. I'm going to play a phone call that I had with him after I found this out just because I think it gives more context. What's up? So there is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. Can you kind of just talk me through your like anything that you remember from the rest of the phone call is unrelated to these texts only his perspective of the night oh that's not good once someone fakes something you're out see even if your story is real now it's out fuck what don't lie lying fucks you over don't lie don't lie for people don't lie because once you lie it's like well don't lie just tell people fuck off um essentially the entire event VidCon, I hit you up to hang out, and then you mentioned that you had an extra bed for your hotel. We got there around like five o'clock. We just went up to your room, like met up. I think it was towards. Lauren says, "Are they saying Dream?" Yeah, so it was Dream was there because these guys are all big YouTubers. Like this guy has ten milli followers. The guy we're watching right now, George, Dream is a big YouTuber. So Dream was there. Um, George was there. Other people were there. It's like nine or ten o'clock we met up at, at dream spot then it was just us three for a bit and then you were dream mentioned like just having some people come over and hang out we were playing i forget what the drinking was called it was i think it was kind of like cards against humanity something similar to that i didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary i didn't really notice any any like bad vibes or anything like that it was a little playful maybe a little flirty um i noticed that you guys were just kind of like playing with each other and just like kind of cuddled up a little bit on the couch so i was just it definitely didn't seem like she was like uncomfortable you know i don't know it seemed like everybody that was there was 
having a having a good time because I mean we were there pretty late so I I don't really follow like this internet stuff like that so I'm not up to date with what's going on online the way she was explaining everything uh i mean at least to me like it didn't it was not like that at all to me it kind of seems like a misunderstanding there wasn't really a thought in my mind that like oh this this girl like could be in some sort of danger or she's being like preyed on or anything like that because yeah even even though george is my friend if, if i noticed him doing anything that i wouldn't want someone i'm friends with to do then i would you know, I would either would say something about it or not be a part of that situation. She says that you left early on in the night. Could you talk about that? I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos. I think I got the party pack. Noise? Something. For some reason, I couldn't believe I actually went and got tacos. <laughs> oh, I know for a fact that I got the tacos. I like Yo, Croatia is heavily dying from not having Mexican food, bro. There's no Mexican food here. It sucks. That's the worst part of Croatia is there's no Mexican food. Really late. Like, I had to go in their drive thru even though I wasn't in a car. Like, I had to walk through their drive thru and, like, order through their speaker. That was yeah. fun. I know I left at five or very close to that time because right after five, I, I texted a dream that I left open. I opened the dead ball on my way out heads up i opened up the deadbolt on my way okay the deadbolt on his door right after i left i text him that mm -hmm. to let him know i think that was at like 5 yeah. 10 a.m i can genuinely say i had a really good good night that's kind of the impression that i got from everybody else too is like everybody was having a good time but hopefully you know you and katie can maybe i don't know if be friends is the right word but I hope, I hope she feels better about it because you know i feel bad that she feels like feels this way but hmm. i don't know much do we think he's telling the truth does he sound honest uh he sounds kind of neutral to me like neither honest or dishonest he just sounds like he's telling a story i guess is there any chance we're being bamboozled and they actually did send the text message but is lying about it or do we think they faked a text message kind of that situation it's just fucking wild that like this whole situation came from like that night it was just like mind-boggling dude i wonder how many of those guys are regretting that whole night like fuck like this whole night's been a pain in the ass like that's the thing is like one night can really just change your whole fucking life right mm. like i wasn't i couldn't really believe it like half the shit i was saying like is someone that was there like, like the trip says seems like he's trying to remember what happened almost a year ago yeah this just well, yeah, it was almost a year ago now, right? It was a year ago. So, yeah, he's trying to, that's the problem is like it happened a long time ago. But also, yeah, Ruby says it, sound, um, it sounds like a rubber, rubber dub, rub dubs. So it sounds like he's trying to seem like he's not one-sided. I could see that too, actually, which is, is that good or bad? You know, Tico says, well, if he did send it to Katie, could just pop, post it without covering the name. Oh, true. She could dox his phone number, which I don't recommend. Right? Katie said she mixed the text up. This girl, man. Other ways that I've heard it being, like, described, like, from what I was, like, reading and watching online is actually kind of insane. So, obviously, after this conversation with him, I was pretty confused. Maybe it was, like, a misunderstanding or something because, obviously, they wouldn't just show this mm. screenshot if it was fake because... I could disprove that pretty easily. True. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on it. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Katie had gotten confused on who said what. And I'm really... Bro. <clears throat> so who sent it? I'm not trying to nitpick anything here. I just really think it's important to make sure that everyone has yeah 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 layla says how could you mix up the message when you had to cover the name what the fuck yeah 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 what the fuck the full picture of the whole event as it happened so that people can accurately form their own opinion anyway the next thing that she talks about is the cuddling she said and this is okay a quote a lot of the touch was initiated by him probably not realizing it I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left as I faced Ghosty to my right. Okay. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but it was just me being drunk. I do. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk, close together, but I get it. I was drunk. 
I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it was to turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. Okay. I think I love the cuddling. It isn't, and it is. It depends on the bubble. Cuddling is not an invitation in all in all cultures. It is in some. So it just depends on what culture you're in, what bubble you're in, right? It was initiated by me, but some like of it I said, you cuddle with your children, don't you? Like, don't you? Like, cuddling is different too. There's like spooning cuddling there's more sexual cuddling there's more platonic i cuddle like if you sit on a couch all in blankets with your sibling shoulder to shoulder isn't that cuddling or if you have a baby in your arms aren't you cuddling with a baby not all cuddling is always sexual the question is with enough of the context which cuddling is and isn't that's why i just bluntly ask like hey wear lots of cuddle keep your hands to yourself or like hey i'd love to cuddle but like no kissing or hey I'd love to cuddle, but this, like I have friends I cuddle, cuddled with before I was married. I had friends I would cuddle with. And even my husband and I had to negotiate, like if I'm allowed to cuddle with my friends. We actually talked about that in our courting. When we were courting, I said, hey, I'm a very like touchy for feely person. Do we want to cuddle with people? How romantic do we want the cuddling to be or how non-romantic? Obviously, we've decided on no romantic cuddling. We're platon or we're monogamous. But we had to have that conversation because I come from a super like sexually liberated bubble. I'm used to cuddling with all my friends, kissing my friends, having sex with some of my friends. So obviously, as I got married, I had to renegotiate what kind of cuddling, if any, can I do with friends and family and people in my life, right? So again, like, what is cuddling? You know, what does that mean? So I think she's right to say that cuddling didn't always mean sex. And I think he's right to assume that cuddling could mean sex. And I think there's like that confusion with the world. And that's why I'm saying it's a bubble. Be Like, know the bubble you're visiting. Know the bubble you're in. Okay, know what they might expect of you. And I've made this mistake. I socially make mistakes in bubbles all the times. Guys, I literally still to this day will continue to make mistakes in different bubbles. What was I just doing? I was shopping at the mall. What did I do? It doesn't matter. The point is like you will think of something that you think is totally normal and you will do it and they'll be like, don't do that here. And you're like, oh, where I'm from, it's totally normal. So that's all that is happening is often when a lot of conflict happens, it's perception, expectation. You know what I mean? It wasn't. I was also drunk, but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual. She also says that, quote. Yeah, and they're both drunk, so they kind of cancel each other out a little bit. I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. Okay, hold on, hold on. I want to read this message. Hold on. But some of it wasn't. I was also drunk, but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual. She also says that, quote, I A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but just was me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk, close together. But I get it. I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it would turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. I was going to push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step I wasn't, oh, I wasn't going to push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things and assumed he had the right. Well, now you're assigning a motivation to him that you don't know. Like, um, objection sustained. Like, that's the problem. <laughs> she's, she's, in, she thinks she can read his mind and I think that's the mistake she's going to run into is like, you don't know that. You don't know that he assumed he had the right to do anything. He assumed he was like, you don't know that. As a shy person, she goes on to say, I could not speak up in front of him and everyone else, let alone say yes. Even if you wanted to take a step forward sexually, why do it in the open? Well, why not? Right? So why not? I would say, why not? Because when I've had public sex before, like, you know what I mean? You would just ask your friends like, hey, do you care if we fuck? You know how many times I've been in hotel rooms with friends and they just started fucking? So again, like everyone has a different expectation of behavior. If you're cautious about context or consent, sorry. If you're cautious about consent, why not ask? Well, sure. But everyone's version of con con ca cautious is going to be different. That's usually the first step. And most important, why does everyone have to take have to get taken a step further. And may I reiterate that I was drunk? Well, I mean, he was drunk too. So like, um, it cancels each other out to an extent. Like it has to. Like in some way, if she was drunk, then he was drunk. So who's more of a victim if they're both drunk? I just think it's kind of bullshit if we're going to say like she was drunk. Well, he was drunk.
Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what does that have to do with one another? I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. I don't think just cuddling is- Silly says there's a podcast episode where George is drunk with two of his friends and he gets really touchy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a touchy touch. You know what I mean? It's an invitation for anything. I only brought the cuddling up because it's something that she didn't mention at all in her original stream. We sat on the couch and the older guy- And by the way, if he's a touchy touchy, he should in the future tell people before he gets drunk, hey, I'm touchy touchy. If you don't want me touching you, like, let's put down, like, rules right now. Sat right next to me while playing. It was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone. Kay says these people have never been on MDMA with the right people and it shows. Bro. <laughs> don't when it happened. And again, it's something that I think people need to know about to understand my perspective fully. The next thing that she talks about is that I said she got up and sat back down with me multiple times. She agreed with this, but said that the reason she did this is because, quote, I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. Yeah, she has a complex. That's the problem. She's not, she's an adult, but this is why age gap, experience, where you are. Look, at 19, like I said, I was hanging out in, with people much older than me, but like, I'm an adult. Like, I'm, my parents can't tell me what to do. Like, I can do whatever I want, right? And at the same time, yeah, some people are more shy than other people. Some people do need to be protected a little bit more. And if you're one of those people, you either have to have friends who will watch you or you need to communicate that to people. So I want to give her the ability to be herself. But I also need to be able to say, like, you can't just go after people, baby, because you're uncomfortable. Habibi. Um, she could have moved. <clears throat> Katie says, yes, I got up and sat up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink more, etc. So she was drunk, getting more drunk. So they didn't have a sober buddy. You know, you're an adult, like you're you're 19, you know you're drinking under age or like under drinking age. Like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of things going on. She's just not, again, she's not taking any of the responsibility on her own actions for something that seems like a miscommunication. Um, let's keep, <clears throat> let's keep going though. Okay. Um, getting up to drink more, etc. Mentally, I believe in a room, I believe in a room on a sofa with people on it. Her grammar fucking sucks, dude. On it, you just sit back where you were when you get up. What? I believe in a room on a sofa with people on it. You just sit back where you were when you got up. Mentally, I was also drunk. And even if I were to move, there would be an obvious hit to his ego to him and everyone in the room, a bold move I didn't need to make. Jesus. I think shy and insecure people might be the reason the world sucks. I'm a little convinced. I'm a little convinced because you expect people to read your mind. Like, look how this is trauma, bro. She needs therapy. How can you think this way about people? How can you think that much about people? Jesus, I wouldn't even think about this. Just sit on the floor. You don't have to sit next to him. He's not even thinking about you. He doesn't care about you. I guarantee you this kid doesn't give a fuck where you sat down. I just guarantee it. There's no fucking way. Okay. Um, I could just deal with it till the night was over and I didn't want, but she stayed after her friends left. She stayed just a reminder. I could just deal with it until the night was over. And I didn't want someone I'd watched for a while with a large following to hate me for denying even to sit near him. I didn't want to embarrass him or myself. I know it's dumb thought process. I acknowledge it. Okay. This, this is, this is why I say you need to take accountability without victim blaming. You need to take accountability without the victim blaming, right? Mistakes happen, especially when you're not using your grown up words. But also the worst he did was tickle her around the waist and cuddle her. So that's good. And it's also better for him in the future to acknowledge that when he drinks, he gets cuddly and to consent with people sober on who can be his cuddle buddies for the night. So sex positive Brittany coming forward here. If you are a touchy feely cuddler when you're drunk, ask who can be your cuddle buddy while drunk and who consents while sober. Then consent with those, pick those people, right? And then if you overstep boundaries, apologize and say, my fucking bad, Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry, it happens. And recontextualize the situation. Literally, no one's sitting there. Like, it's not like he's sitting around there thinking, I'm going to take advantage of Katie. If he's not seriously thinking about that, then we need to train each other to act accordingly. So that's why I'm really bold with people. No, don't touch me there. You can touch me here. No, you can't touch me. You're not good at it. You need to stop. No, you know, treat them like dogs. No, hands off. Hands off. If you put your hands on me, we're going to get in trouble. And then they go, okay, okay, damn. 
I'm okay. And I'm like, oh, like treat men like dogs, treat women like dogs. When they're drunk, treat them like babies. Wait. Okay. Anyways, I've been, let me tell you how many times I've been DD in my life. I've been in charge of drunk adults so much in my twenties. I, they're like children. You know how many of these drunk adults have left the sink running, puked all over the carpet, to grab their keys. You know how many of my friends I had to fight to the ground because they would grab their keys and try to drive their cars drunk. And I'd be like, bad. No, no. And they're like, I want to drive. You can't tell me not to drive my car. And I'm like, I'm telling you right now, bitch, if you grab those keys and drive your car, I'm calling the cops on you. I can't believe you're going to call the cops on me. I just want to go get more alcohol. Don't fucking move. You know how many times I've tackled my own friends to the ground? What am I breaking their consent? Cause I won't let them drive drunk. Grow up. Okay. You're not allowed to drive drunk, bitch. We already discussed this sober. That's why I'm the DD. I'm the designated driver. I will drive you to get more alcohol. Okay. So again, like you have to be, you know, and then again, if you're going to go into a bubble in which there's drinking and everyone's, you know, trying to treat you like an adult because you're 19, maybe they shouldn't have. Maybe they should never have let you into the party. But I know for a fact, if they didn't let Katie into that party, she would have fucking bitched about it. So that's the problem. Don't let people under 21 into your parties if you're a YouTuber and you're at a public event. I'm just telling you this right now. Don't do that. Okay? It's not worth this. It's not worth this. It is not worth this. And if they're over 21, make sure you learn they're, they're chill. Make sure they're chill. You know what I mean? And then somebody bring a sober friend and companion. Didn't want someone. Oh, hold on. Um, okay. So bold move. I didn't even make. Okay. I didn't want to embarrass myself. Okay. Okay. I had watched for a while over the large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. Now this makes me feel terrible. It's something that she mentions throughout this power imbalance. But this is not something at all that I was thinking about at the time. She was a VidCon invited guest. She had a hotel room on the same floor as Dream. She was friends with my friends. And honestly, I just never imagined that this is something that she could have thought. And I do think that's my problem. I should have been aware of this or at least the possibility of this being the case. It's a weird thing to be aware of, but yeah, you should be aware of it. Try to figure out like who's treating you like a celebrity and who's treating you like a person. Like try to look, people get inappropriate. It's life. Just like, that's why you have to have boundaries with yourself and not other people. Like, tell yourself, like, okay, who am I willing? Like, that's why, okay, I don't talk to minors. That's like a, ba I, I like keep a rule in place for myself. I don't talk to people who are underage unless I have explicit permission from their parents. And even then, because like, I don't trust anybody. I don't, there are other agencies. There's the ACLU. There's the LGBT organizations. There's churches. You don't have to contact a YouTuber or a streamer. So I don't talk to people underage. That's like a big rule of mine. I implemented it years ago and it's the best decision I ever made. I don't. If you're a minor, you can't do calls with me. You can't join my Patreon. None of it. You can't join YouTube memberships. Everything is 18 plus. You gotta be 18 because at least the bare minimum is that you're a grown adult. And then if you can't handle it, sis, stop paying me. You know what I'm saying? So his mistake, I think, is probably partying with people under 21. Start there. Eliminate everyone under 21. Make your life way easier. Then we can talk about which 21 plus older people you're hanging out with. And I am sorry. I, I feel terrible about it. Mm. I've never really thought about power imbalance at all, to be honest. In that room, I wasn't thinking about, you know, YouTube subscribers or fame or... He probably is a big enough YouTube subscriber too, or YouTube content creator, and he's friends with Dream. So he's probably not thinking much about it. Like there are YouTubers, you'll see them interact with like crazy famous people and they don't even act any different. And then you'll see other people interact with people and you can tell there's a difference. I, I'm sure he probably takes a personal perspective of like not thinking much about it. But then we have to, we do have to keep in mind that other people think something about it. You know what I mean? Or power or anything at all like that. I just saw us all as friends hanging out, having fun. Again, I'm not trying to downplay this by saying this. It is genuinely something that I'm going to be thinking about going into the future. This comes up again later, and I'll have more to say then. Next, she talks about how I mentioned that she stayed for hours even after. Hold on. Kazar says, I honestly think blowing up the blowing up during quarantine made it hard on from George and his friend to really visualize their fame. This was the only second event he had went to. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. So Katie goes on to say she stayed when her friends left. I was curious about this too. Let's see what George says. So her best friend left. She says that her best friend left throwing up in her hand and that she didn't know she had left. That so I'm going to read the whole thing. I didn't make the conscious decision to choose to stay. My friend 
left throwing up in her hand and I didn't know. She was so drunk. She couldn't hold in her vomit and pass out in our bathroom. Gross. And more the night went on. Been there. The drunker I was, like I said before, I put it up with it the moment in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big content creators. Oh, <gasps> I have a whole theory on this. Those last three points, may I remind you, are not an invitation to be sexual or I wanted it. If he thought I did, he should have asked. Okay. Auntie Brittany coming in. If you, if you need to self-care and leave the stream, you can do that. But I need to talk to you adult to adult. If you are willing to sell your soul for status, I don't give a fuck about your tears. I wish I could, but there are genuine people out in the world that are not selling their souls for fame and money and status, who are being targeted, harassed, hurt, raped, who need my attention more than you because you know better and you're doing it on purpose. You are saying I'm willing to be sexually assaulted for fame, money, and status. And in that case, I'm hearing consent. A consent I think is dirty and disgusting, but I don't have time to cry for you, sis. When I've got people who are being held down, forced, coerced, brainwashed. I'm having people that are being threatened literally at knife point. And you are consenting for status and money for clout and like, and you want me to cry for you? No, no. So when she said, well, this is the th price I thought I had to pay to be around such big content creators. First of all, you're bad at business. That was never the price to get into the room. The price was free. Second, you willingly gave that price for status. So where's the victim status then? She didn't make the conscious decision to stay. Now, this isn't my recollection of what happened. I actually, I remember Ghosty getting up to leave and Katie getting up to say goodbye to her. I also asked Dream about this and he had the same recollection as me. So two of the guys say, see, here's the problem. Now the story's moot. Because she already said she did it for the chance. And it, yeah, it didn't involve sex or kissing or anything. It just involved him tickling her and her sitting on a couch. Bummer, Katie. You need to go to therapy, sis. Like, this is bad. You need to go to therapy, girl. But yeah, see, I wouldn't hang out with Katie. I would blacklist her. Emotionally unstable, possibly mentally deranged, uh, not responsible enough to hold accountability for her actions. Um, I'm not saying George is any better. I definitely probably have no desire to hang out with Dream. Like, they seem like big children to me. Everyone here seems really silly. But overall, like, she just admitted out loud that she thought the price for clout and status was basically to let him cuddle her. What are we talking about? What is this conversation really about then? Now, obviously, I want to encourage you to have better morals and dignity and say that I'm not willing to sell out for any kind of status. I don't care if Weinstein is offering you a movie, a role in his movie, say no. If you don't want to have sex with him, don't have sex with him, right? If you're being held down against your will, if you're being coerced, if your life is being threatened, not your money, your life, these are two different things. You can always make more money. You can't live more lives. If your life is being threatened, that's different, okay? So that's different. Lindsay said, well, how would this theory apply to the Weinstein case? I think a lot of the Weinstein cases were rape, and I think a lot of them weren't. I think a lot of those women sold their souls for roles in movies, and I think some of those women were definitely raped. So I think Weinstein's a rapist. I just don't think he raped every single one of those women. I think some of those women were more than happy to sell their soul for a movie role, which is between them and their god. But I do think Weinstein did rape some women. I think he, he did rape some of those women. Just not specifically the ones that were told and were willing to do nude or sex scenes in order to get roles. That's just called business. You know what I'm saying? It's dirty business, but, you know, so is the underground, so is the mafia, so are gangs, and here we are. Okay? It's funny we'll throw gang members in prison for doing dirty business, but not Hollywood like celebrities. I've been very consistent about how I feel about the Weinstein cases. My friends and I have argued about this, especially my feministy friends. 
I've had this opinion the whole time through. Rape is rape. Business is business. Two different things. We were all drunk, so I can't 100% say for sure what actually happened. But as per my memory, she was aware that Ghosty had left. Also you guys think Katie's friend group is gaslighting her? I mean, probably. I do. I think ultimately I want like less rape victims in the world. So we have to be clear when we're consenting under duress, when we're being forced or threatened, and when we're afraid to lose a movie role. So we're willing to, if you're afraid, like that's what I'm saying. Where are your morals? Who raised you? I was raised by a family that said, walk away, money's not worth it. If you think money is worth it, then girl, it's, you're doing it in exchange. That's called an exchange of goods, girl. Okay. <clears throat> also, according to what she said, Katie and Ghosty were sharing the same hotel room together. So Casey and Go Case Ghosty and Katie were sharing the same hotel room. So they could have gone together, but then Ghosty was able to get back to her hotel, hotel room. Okay. The obvious assumption is that they would probably leave together. The fact that she chose to stay despite not really knowing most of the people there gave me a pretty positive impression on how she felt about staying there. She says that- after So she's saying she was too drunk to know to leave the hotel room or that her friend left. But two of the guys there, George and Dream, say they saw her say bye to her friend. But she was, too, she could have been too drunk, guys. She could have been. But the problem is they were all drunk. So again, like who's more drunk? And it doesn't change. Like you can't rape people just because you're drunk. That's not allowed. You can't drive drunk and hurt someone because you're drunk. Like, right? But the point was, is like no sex occurred. No kissing occurred. No clothes were taken off. The worst he did was tickle her without her consent, which by the way, like if you want to take someone to prison for that, like you're kind of fucked up a little bit, bro. Like there's something about you that's fucked up, right? So... And the hotel room was on the same floor. Good point. After Ghosty left, quote, I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big creators. Again, like I said before, this is just not something I even thought she could be thinking. Mm. And I'm sorry that I didn't. Next, she talks about me being more touchy as the night went on and says this, quote, you didn't know me. Hold on. Well, he assumed because your body language quotes. Katie says we had just met. Why did he think he knew me so well that he could assume how I felt? I mean, you do that in shopping markets. You do that with clerks at a grocery store. You do that when you're driving with people. You know when people are mad at you. It's the way they drive, the way they move their body language. Like, you might misread body language sometimes. That's true. But most of us live our whole life depending on body language. Like, that's why people who are autistic, it can be so difficult sometimes. Or people who are neurotypical who are playing games, it can be difficult sometimes. But, like, even when you're in the grocery store, you're all reading each other's body language. You're not even talking. You're reading each other's body language. You're like, oh, you go. No, you go. Like, you're, this is, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Why do you think he knew me so well? He could assume how I felt. Assume he knew about my mannerisms meant you didn't know me. Apparently, you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I wanted. Well, it's a part of assuming. And then we make mistakes. A lot of us assume based off context clues. And sometimes you're mistaken. Yes. He assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? Okay, that's a narrative she's pushing on him. See how she's pushing this narrative onto him? Does he have a history of being a predator? Like, this seems like such a weird narrative. And remind me, uh, since when was I smiling? An, since when was smiling an invitation? Since day one? When sitting next to someone an invitation? Since when was being drunk an invitation? Well, smiling is a form of imita like invitation, actually. Do you know as women, in some bubbles, they teach us never to smile at a man because smiling is an invitation? Do you know in Croatia, like, my partner was like, stop smiling at people. Stop smiling at people. Just, like, look forward and don't make eye contact. And I was like, because in America, I'm always like, hi. And that is it. I learned that the hard way. I would smile at somebody and then they'd come talk to me. I'm like, why are you talking to me? Smiling in a lot of places is an invitation. Even old people do it, right? So to be fair to her, she's in a bubble where for her that makes a lot of sense, but for me that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, smiling is an invitation, right? So, you know, it's not always. I'm not saying it's black and white. I'm just saying like everyone is different. Silly says, no, people thought he was gay because he never talked about sex or girlfriends. He seems very neurodivergent to me. I would say, 
again, I don't want to diagnose people. I'm not a therapist, but he obviously seems very neurodivergent to me. How autistic is our friend here? Be honest. Does he have autism? He seems very neurodivergent to me. He he does not seem fuckboyish. He has a he has a look, but his aesthetic, his voice, the way he's monotone, very interesting to me. You know. Um, her friend group absolutely hates him and Dream due to fake grooming allegations against Dream. Yeah, I think those were thrown out, right? Why were they hanging out with Dream if they hate him so much? If it was for clout, like she said, this feels like she's definitely did this on purpose to create a story. Damn, that's too bad. Another girl lost. Not all girls do this, obviously, but she she might be the type of girl that's willing to do this. Ah, eh, that's too bad. Eh, what are you gonna do? 19, so young, you know? Apparently, you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? This is absolutely not how I think about this kind of situation at all. I would never think like that. And honestly, it's kind of an evil way to think about things. Just Definitely autism. He thinks he might have ADHD. Look, if you're a streamer, if you're a content creator, you got something, girl. It's a matter of what it is. You know what I mean? And he definitely has like a little bit of autism energy to me. He has a touch of it. It's a joke in his friend group. Yeah. I mean, you either have autism or don't. And I think he has autism, but I don't know. He clicks trinkets and has a lot of ADHD mannerisms. Yeah, he should definitely, he should get tested. Because that would make a lot more sense, I think, for a lot of what's happening. You know what I mean? A lot of streamers, in, like, with peace and love, one thing I've learned about being a streamer is everyone is so neurodivergent and everyone's in denial of it. And then they get diagnosed and they're like, oh, and I'm like, even myself, I'm like, mm-hmm. It just makes sense. Like, no offense. It just, neurotypicals are making different content. They're make, they have different obsessions. They're doing different things. They make different kinds of energy. Like, you have to be some sort of something to sit here for this long, you know? Having the opinion that you can do anything because you're famous or whatever. And I never once remotely thought anything similar to that. And yeah, he doesn't have any, like, look at his eyes and the way he's talking. Again, if I, see... This is where you need, you know, Mama Simon, like, consent classes. And obviously, like, you sh don't party with people you don't know type thing. But obviously, obviously, people do it all the time, you know? And I feel terrible reading those words knowing that you think that about me. I would never think that I'm owed anything. Ah, uh, Discord says I sometimes can't di differentiate just being an internet baby from undiagnosed autism sometimes. Bro, that's a good point. You said I don't know in his case. Some people also age. I noticed neurodivergence. Well, first they age like a, they mature a little slower uh, depending on the bubble and their atmosphere. Streamers in particular and YouTubers, we stay young. That's why a lot of us are very immature in comparison to other people doing different things at our age. And a lot of millennials, especially and Gen Zers, there's like a level of immaturity that stays within us. So without the right tools, you're just going to have like a couple of life lessons to learn. I mean, he's only 26. He's still a kid, bro. Him and Sneeko, they're all just babies, you know? When they're 35, let's have more conversations about where they are in terms of, like, their maturity levels. And even then, you know, I am I watch anime. I'm immature, okay? I was yelling at Luffy this morning, like, you know? But um, I, I think there's something about him that I actually do think he's probably not maliciously intended. And I think Katie, either with intent or without intent, did have a perception that I think was incorrect. So as much as I want to validate her very strong emotions, I do think she should probably work with like a DBT therapist or a CBT therapist and see if she can regulate some of those emotions. Because again, even if it was unconsensual and it, it will be throughout your whole life, girl, like people will touch you. Old ladies will touch your hair or people will touch your shoulder or people will grab you for a hug. And you're going to have to learn that cultures around the world are different and not everyone's trying to rape you. Sometimes they're just trying to say hi to you in a way that feels safe for them. And yeah, maybe it'd be nice if people didn't automatically do this to us, but not everyone feels that way. That's why living in a society is so difficult. Some people want to be embraced. Some people would think it's so cute if an old person came up and like gave me a hug or like some people would think it's adorable. We're not all the same. And so like, yeah, it'd be nice if people asked. But also, maybe it wouldn't be for some people. ...thing from anyone just because I have a YouTube channel, especially in an intimate context. Again, I'm really sorry for this, and it actually has been pretty eye-opening to me. 
and it's just not how I've ever really thought about stuff before. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I thought like this because obviously there are people out there that think like that and use that to take advantage of people. And it makes sense that if you think that about me, that you would hate me. But that is not who I am at all. And I just really hope that you can understand that. Now, another thing that she mentioned that changed my perspective on things was that she showed texts from two of her friends the day after checking up on her to see how she felt. She says, quote, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit like damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. And this is something that I was. This is a good introspection moment for Katie. This is a good reason for her to ask herself, was I sweating because I was nervous? Was I chilling? Like she needs to ask herself away from her friends. She needs to have no input. See how your friends can fuck you over? Don't listen to anybody. How did you actually feel? How do you actually like, how, what's your relationship with this? Not what other people think. Don't get bullied into a, a, a prescription. How do you feel? I was actually completely unaware of. I wasn't aware of any uncomfortableness in the moment after the fact or even after Katie's first stream. I just wasn't aware that anyone had expressed discomfort until I saw these texts. I actually had the opposite impression just because we were all really friendly afterwards still. Dream match. See, they were all friendly afterwards and everything. That's what I'm saying. Like, again, this if he had had sex with her, if other things had happened, we could be having the conversation differently. Nothing happened. Like, like nothing honestly happened. You know what I mean? So like, it's just a, like, it's a social mistake. It will happen. One time I was at MythCon and I was there and one of the guys was drunk and he came up and he touched my hair and I looked behind me and I went and he was like, and I was like, don't touch my hair. And he was like, oh, my bad. And like, yeah, like I could have blown up after him. I could have been like, what the fuck? You're not allowed to do that. What the fuck? But I was just like, and like, again, it's because. One, I was at a good time in my life, so I was, like, doing better. And two, um, I was used to it. I'm used to people touching me. I don't know what it is. Old ladies, men, people, they just, like, they feel like they can touch me. And look, I don't think they're trying to rape me. If I went around thinking all these people were trying to rape me, that would be pretty bad. Because it's not within reason. It's not within reason. It's insane to think people are trying to rape you because they're touching your hair. They're just stupid. They're just literally dumb animals. They're literally so fucking dumb. All they're thinking with their monkey brains is like hair, must touch hair. Oh my God, must touch it. They're not thinking. They're just fucking stupid. And so again, like as long as you're stupid, does it make me have to fight for my life? Like I can, you know, I can forgive you touching my hair, bro. And I can lecture you about it. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I'm used to it. And it's just one of those things where I'm like, and I look, I went through stages where that shit would trigger me for sure. Like medically trigger, medically upset me because I was in my trauma. And that's what I'm saying. I wonder if Katie has trauma and this reminded her of something, but like nothing really happened without discounting her feelings, without blaming her. I want her to have such a good understanding of her own emotions that she seeks out help for why this was such a big deal for her. I don't need to shame her. I don't need to say she's a bad person. We need to understand what would bring a person to do this in the first place. What would make her say this is what happened? What would make her say this, like put this whole thing on? You know what I mean? So again, I don't need to be like everyone else on the internet that's calling her horrible names or saying she's an evil person. I hardly think she's evil. In the same way that I don't think George has malicious intent, I'm not convinced Katie does. I'm a little convinced her friends have malicious intent. I'm not sure if Katie does. And that's, you know, I don't know yet. But that's the problem. Let's see. We'll, we'll try to check out her Twitter after this. But I don't think George has malicious intent. Again, I'm not quite convinced Katie does. But obviously, it looks like Katie's in the wrong so far. She had a conversation about this with almost everyone that was in that room a few months later. One of their friends had actually tweeted about Dream, saying that he was inviting an 18-year-old girl back to his hotel to drink. You're a 24-year-old man who spent his entire teenage years locked away in his room on the internet, and now you're trying to re relive your teenage years, but it's just come across as weird as shit when you invite 18-year-old girls back to your hotel rooms to drink. That's what I've been saying about Leonardo DiCaprio. That's what I've been saying about age gap, age gap relationships. 
I do think if you're old, like if the person's in their 20s and you're much older than them, like Leo's what, 50 dating 25 year olds. Yeah, I think you're trying to relive your childhood. I think you missed out and you're mad you're old and you have trauma. And Leo most likely was molested since he worked with a lot of the guys who are now in prison. So he probably is incredibly stunted, incredibly traumatized. And I do think he dates 25 year olds because he's traumatized. And I'm not saying it's okay or okay. I'm just saying like, hey, maybe it's not the healthiest. Instead of moralizing it, I'm just going to say it's not the healthiest. And I think that you should strive to be healthy. So like with peace and love, um, yeah, I do think it's weird. But I think a lot of these gamers are weird. I think a lot of online characters are weird. I think it's so important to have real life off the internet. Like I have, like somebody, you know, I told my husband this today. I said, you know what's funny is the internet thinks I share a lot about my life with them. But what I share is a lot about me. But I'm not sharing my life with you. You know this, yes? I'm going to talk about boundaries now. I don't share my life with the internet. I share me. A lot about me. But I don't tell you about like my family in a, in a way that's like beyond their comfortable level. I don't like mention certain things about my life, like my actual life. Like there's a there's a part of my life that is so real and so offline that that's my life and this is my work life and I love this part of my life. But like a lot of these online people don't have a life outside of the internet. So they don't, they get lost in this sort of internet bubble. And I see it happen. And it's not necessarily always bad, but I think if you're unhealthy plus this combination, it, it, it might not be good. You know, I'm not going to blame the internet, but I'm going to say like ages are really weird here. Rules are really weird here. The world is really like underground communities used to be underground, but now they're just on the internet. And I love an underground community, but like, you you know, when, when an underground community becomes mainstream, it gets ruined for a reason. Because all the strict rules you put in place to protect people, people don't want to do them. You know how many times people came into BDSM and didn't like all the rules because it was too boring because they had read Fifty Shades of Grey and they wanted to have fun? Like once something goes mainstream, all the rules the community put in place originally to keep people safe, it goes out the window because it gets too big and out of hand. And then a bunch of people come in and just make it more suspicious for people. Some communities are safer, safer when they never go mainstream. Some parts of the internet were better when no one knew about them. And then sometimes they're way worse and people maybe should know about them, you know? Drink at VidCon and was implying very negative things about Dream being a predator. So Dream realized this could have only been about Katie because it was a pretty specific call out, but thought that it was just being purposefully misleading from someone that hated him. Dream actually had no idea as well that anyone was uncomfortable and assumed that this tweet was implying Katie was uncomfortable with Dream. He reached out to Ghosty about it, asking what this was even about and did the same to others. I'm playing him a pedo or something, trying to hook up with her. Like what wasn't like that at all. Holy fuck. Yeah, that's insane. You guys only came because I invited blank and she said if you guys would come. I said, sure. Didn't know anything about you guys, nor was I trying to have sex with Katie. LOL. Katie never once implied you tried to get with her either. Like Katie is cool and I enjoyed hanging out with her. I'd like to be her friend, but like that's because of her personality, not because I'm trying to have sex with her. Invited an 18 year old to your hotel to have drinks is so disingenuous. Like, OK, including Katie. Now, I'm not going to be showing Katie's text with. No, 100 percent. Sen, I totally get this situation is absolutely crazy and I don't think Katie is going to be the happiest to hear that Harry did this. I didn't think he blank did. He I didn't know she was 18 either. It was only my hotel because it was big and was the hub for everyone to hang. With Dream because at the time Dream had told her that her messages and conversation would not leave their texts. However, here is Dream and Ghosty's conversation about it. I was never brought up or mentioned at all. And also when Dream makes fun of Harry for being ridiculous and making stuff up because nothing happened and we were all still friends, she said, exactly. She actually spoke about this on her stream very recently and I don't want to speak for her, so I'm going to play. Isn't Harry the one who sent the text that he didn't send? So are they also having a conversation based off a text that never got sent? Question mark? Flip where she clarifies these messages. The only time that we had a conversation about anything that had to do with that night was obviously when the stuff with Harry happened. Um, and he uh, texted who's Harry now I'm confused and me asking if it seemed like anything had happened and I at the time Harry was the guy who tweeted the thing saying dream was invited to an 18 year old to drink oh okay 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 
said no because the conversation was not about George. The conversation was about him. And it was about... Now, I do think Dream is insane. I don't know what the timeline... When was the timeline between when Dream had his recent accusations and this? Because I do think what amazes me about men and people, women too, what amazes me about people is they will get in trouble for something. The universe will try to teach them a lesson and they don't learn from their mistakes. Like, stop hanging out with people that are too young. Date people or be with people in your age range and be super prudish if you have to. Don't even go to parties. Like, you know what I mean? Better to protect you and your reputation than to risk it for some fun with people that are going to be pieces of shit. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of curious about that a little bit. Like, was this before or after his allegations? Because if it's after his allegations, he still shouldn't hang out with 18-year-olds who are drinking. Like, none of these people are, like, bright enough to think about how this is going to play. But to be fair... It's really hard to know who's going to see your content or who's going to be there. And if they weren't celebrities, to be honest with you, this would be pretty normal. Like, if I'm going to be real with you, drinking with people from 18 to whatever is going to be normal. You know how many house parties I went to? They weren't the safest places with people in their 30s drinking with 15-year-olds because they all work together. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So it's kind of interesting. You know, like, it depends on the bubble you're in. Again, not the safest places, Right. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but also like it's it's one of those things where like the older people just wouldn't interact with the younger people, but everybody knew each other from like work or school or some sort of like relationship. So I know it sounds weird, but also it's not like people are really living these lives. Guys, there's so much complexity and nuance to how people are existing. It would fucking blow your brains. And so this idea that the internet has where it's like, this is how life is or this is how it should work or this is horrible. Like, wait until you hear what they're doing in your churches. You know, it's like, there are bigger fish to fry, bro. But also, I kind of get it because ideally, we wouldn't be in any situation to take advantage of people and we'd be trying to be as safe as possible. But nobody knows what that means. Nobody has the tools to be safer. You know? The underage drinking. And it wasn't ever about whether or not Katie, you know, it was it was always just about him and not George, which is why I said, dude, no, nothing seemed wrong because he wasn't doing anything wrong. And I can stand by that. I, I will stand by that comment. And I said that in one of my posts. That So who's the friend that's most influencing Katie? Has she spoken out? You know, you know, like it, it wasn't him. That was our conversation. It was never about George. It was about him and the Harry situation. And it was about me it, at the time had seemed that Dream was one who had taken advantage of Katie, and I said he didn't, and I and I I didn't lie. Mm. And Ghosty, I'm really not trying to use your words against Katie or you. I'm just trying to paint an accurate picture of our perspective of the night, and to do that, I kind of have to talk about everything that we knew. I don't think your words negate at all how Katie felt, of course, but they did affect how I perceived the situation afterwards. Mm -hmm. Even after Katie's stream, this kind of confused us and Dream especially because he thought that this would have come up in these conversations. Now, he was he was so confused that he was convinced that Harry was essentially being malicious. Wait, and Ghosty is the person that's mostly influencing Katie, but then she just, wasn't that Ghosty? And didn't she just come out and say, basically they're chilling? Oh, I think Ainsy and Max G. Mm, okay. Okay, I don't know who they are either, damn. And he said this, and Ghosty and others there agreed with him. Ghosty even said that her friends should get to know him because she and Katie had actually had pretty negative opinions of Dream before meeting him, but had their minds changed after meeting him at VidCon. This is obviously said about Dream and not me, but Dream looked at this as positive about the entire experience and shared this with me. It seems like Ghosty has changed her mind about this now, but I just think it's really relevant to how we felt about the situation mm. as a whole and to show this to you guys. Honestly, over the last year or so, anytime a creator has kind of distanced themselves from me, I just assumed it was because of Dream. Dream had false grooming allegations against him, and I assumed that because of this and my association with Dream, people didn't like me. After Dream posted his video disproving these allegations, I honestly thought pretty poorly of creators that were still negative to me as now i thought there was literally no reason for it and now after seeing katie's follow-up i realized that probably everyone knew about this behind the scenes and i think that is insane yeah i was walking around with these people at other events or interact with them in any way and all the time they were just thinking terribly about me 
and I didn't even know, and That's neither crazy. did any of my friends. If I'd seen Katie in person, I would have gone up to her normally. I would have assumed we were still friends. I think this is a massive injustice to Katie. It actually kind of makes me rethink a lot of my experiences with other Actually, that is kind of fucked up to Katie. If y'all thought you were hanging out with her sexual assaulter and you guys didn't do shit about it, that's kind of fucking shitty. But also, some victims do ask you to act completely normal and not to do anything about it. So I think that's also really shitty. So I think it's a combination of both. I've definitely... Yeah, I think it's a combination of both where there is a bubble in which the victim doesn't want you to say anything to the perpetrator because they won't be believed. But then at the same time, you're basically socializing. You know what I mean? Like, there's definitely something about this that mm, 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 could be real. Yeah, I think that's the problem is like, OK, again, when we talk about categorization and we say what kind of people is this and what kind of people is this? Genuinely, I would wash my hands of all these people. If I was George, I would say with peace and love, this has brought me nothing but drama. You know what I mean? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. You know what I mean? I just, I think there's something about this that is just too toxic to unravel. And I would probably want to alienate myself. You know what I mean? Uh, personally? Hmm. Yeah. Phrases just looking back on it with this new information. And I don't even know who these people are. And even right now, after all of this information is public and, and out there, I still haven't had a single private conversation with anyone who knew about it prior to Katie's stream. This is all just to say that I didn't have any idea that there was a problem and I wish that I had, and I should have. The last thing to mention is her age. Like I said, I wasn't aware at the time that she was 18. I mentioned that they had come from an official VidCon after party, they were drunk, and I made the assumption that knowing how these events are run, that she was probably over the age of 21, as they wouldn't have been able to drink in there otherwise. Now, they actually said that they drank somewhere else briefly before showing up, and that makes more sense. Hold on. No one drank at the Instagram party because we... We weren't there for long, but there was drinking that happened before we got to their hotel room that I completely forgot about because I hadn't really been drunk until we got there. The night was kind of a blur. That's from Ghosty Fruity. They drank somewhere else briefly before showing up, and that makes more sense. It is irresponsible of me that I made this assumption, and going forward, I will make sure to explicitly ask for a person's age. And I'm sorry, Kate. Look for IDs, and then does he know how to look for a fake ID? Crazy that I did not do that for you. I also brought up how when I was going back through the texts, I found a picture of one of them wearing a 21 plus age wristband. And I showed this picture. Now this is from a group chat that I wasn't in, but Dream showed me this when I was making my video. And I figured it was relevant to why I was under the impression she wasn't 18. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it and it was just someone else's hand. Okay, I'm glad he corrected himself. It wasn't Katie wearing that, it was someone else. So in these texts, they say, this is a quote, Loose ass 21 plus wristband. We have a strat. Now to explain what this strategy is for the people that haven't really been in a club environment or a place where you would get a wristband like this. Essentially, they give you this wristband to show that you are over 21 so that you can get drinks from the bar. These wristbands are made in a way so that once they're put on, they cannot be taken off without breaking it. And that's precisely why they're used to prevent people from underage drinking. But clearly the security that gave the girls these bracelets didn't do a good enough job. Mm. And didn't put it on tight enough. And this just shows that you can never be too careful and shouldn't make assumptions like I did. And I should have asked for her age. And I am sorry that I did not. This is not a mistake that I will make again. From Katie's okay. statement, it kind of seems like she didn't believe that I didn't know she was 18 and kind of- It's kind of irrelevant. Like she is an adult and she knows she's drinking. So ultimately like, I think there's something to be said about how we hold people accountable differently. And I think that's fair. Context really matters. Because sometimes I'll see something really bad happen to like an 18-year-old boy or a 16-year-old boy. And I'll say this is obviously mental health, right? And this is really a bad decision on his part. And there is consequence to his actions, whether he likes it or not. But ultimately, him even making the decision to begin with was some sort of like he has to be accountable for that. But when a girl does it, I think in this context, it feels more empathetic and sympathetic to say that she was victimized. And I think that's possible, always possible. My heart goes out to victims, right? 
The dilemma is that to some extent, I think given the circumstance and all the information we have so far, it's clear she understood she was partying. She understood she was drinking. She's 18. I do trust her to make this decision to drink. Personally, even though I don't think you should drink uh, under 21 with people you don't trust, I can understand why an adult would want to drink considering we can join the military and kill people. You think we would be able to drink a beer. So like, I'm not going to be like such a stickler and a prude and pretend like I didn't drink at 18, 19, 20, 21. Like, I think that's kind of silly. So I can remember being 18 and thinking I'm old and mature and like I'm allowed to drink and get drunk with my friends. And I remember making those decisions. And if had anyone had taken advantage of me at the time because of those decisions, it would have been devastating. But ultimately, the worst case scenario that happened at this party was also in some ways uh, just a simple mistake. Okay? And mistakes are allowed to happen in life because you learn from them. So, you know, moving forward, we have to make good decisions about who we're drinking around. If there's going to be a sober partner to be there with us. Look, it sucks for the sober person to have to babysit, but you take that responsibility on to protect your friends. As somebody who was DD a lot of her 20s, as somebody who's always that sober companion, it can be a little annoying, but ultimately I'm glad I could be there for my friends. And I did. I prevented a lot of bad shit from happening, mostly related to driving and drinking, mostly related to silly things like turning the sink on and flooding the whole bathroom. Girl, when I tell you I walked into that bathroom and it was drowning in water, I'm like, these drunk bitches, bro, you know, I get it. Things happen. People honk a honk of boobs. People grab booties. People do stuff. You know, it's just life. Shit happens. You forget the rules. You do things You like, OK. Right. Again, I think ultimately we need to ask ourselves, you know, what kind of life do we want for ourselves and what situations are we OK with? And ultimately moving forward, I hope Katie doesn't go to any parties. And I hope if she goes, she has a sober companion because this was obviously way I'd out of her wheelhouse, if you will. Thinks I'm just being dishonest about it. She said that she had it in her bio and that I DM'd her, so she was very confident that I knew. Later that night when I left, I received... Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. So, uh, Silly says, don't leave your friends alone with drunk strangers while drunk. Okay, but I'll tell you, I have a friend of mine who had a story. They were really upset about it. She was drinking with friends, and one of the girls refused refused to leave with her friends. She wanted to go home with a guy. And they were like, don't go home with this guy. Come home with us. And the girl physically assaulted her friends for trying to keep her from going home with this guy. So their friends let them go home with the guy. Like, they let her go home with him. You know what I mean? And in situations like that, no offense. Like, I think there is an appropriate situation in which if your friend is trying to like poke out your eyes, you got to like let them go do their life. You know what I mean? And at the same time, if something bad happened to her, it wasn't the friend's responsibility at that point because the friends aren't responsible for putting themselves in harm's way for their friend. I just don't think you are responsible for laying down your life for a friend that's willing to exchange your life for what they want. If your friend is willing to physically assault you, for trying to stop them from making a bad decision, like that's their bad decision to make, you know? And in the same right, that's why you have to negotiate sober. Hey, if you fight me on this, should I call the cops to arrest you? Hey, if you fight me on this, should someone force you into a car? Hey, if you fight me on this, like what should we do? And then maybe even take a recording of them saying, if I do this, take me home. You know what I mean? So again, like I think the problem is, is that there's so many different kinds of cases where this stuff happens. We have to be very careful, you know, but again, you don't learn this stuff in regular society. All of this consent stuff I learned was from BDSM. All of the drinking, driving, consent stuff I learned from like my parents. All of the stuff I learned about having a sober buddy at places was from sex positive communities. Everything I learned about asking people, you know what I mean, was about that. Now, of course, when I'm in different bubbles, I act differently, right? I don't I don't use my rules with everybody because like I'm in other people's spaces. Like culture, I don't shake hands the same way in every bubble because like it's not I'm not I'm a guest. So even consent is cultural. So when I'm in a different consent bubble, I do things differently, right? In some bubbles, I would negotiate sober before having sex in some bubbles I'm happy to get drunk with someone and have sex it just depends on the bubble obviously 
Like, I know some people who think if you wake your partner up in the middle of the night to have sex, that's great. But for me, that's obviously not. And if it is for you, that's great. But like for me, my partner has blanket consent. Blanket consent, meaning he can do anything he wants within reason. We've negotiated what that means. Like, you know, there's also, there's obviously things like, you know, no surprise anal is a good rule. <laughs> Though I've done that, you know, sometime in my early 20s, like, you know, in the moment anal, like, mm, you're just like, oh, no, per mm, you know what I mean? Um, good times. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is, is like everyone has a different rule and you learn your boundaries as you age and how, and like by making mistakes. So again, for some people, they don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night. That's like super abusive. For other people, it's like the thrill of their, their night. Everyone's different. Figure out what kind of different you are. Figure out who you are. Be introspective so you can avoid being hurt and you can avoid hurting other people. Introspection is for you but it also helps other people. Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. For context, as you can see here in the screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. Oh, 19. Okay. So she's 18, 19. Who cares? And because of this, I was also pretty confused how I didn't know that she was 18. As it's literally in her name, not it even. It still in doesn't her matter. It's in her name. But if it was, in I did this. I told you guys. I went to a BDSM party, and I thought it was twenty-one and over, and it was eighteen plus. But I thought it was twenty-one and over, and I was in bed with this girl, and she was like, "Oh yeah, I'm nineteen. I was like, "Nineteen? Get out of my bed!" Because I was twenty-four at the time. I think twenty-four, twenty-three, and I remember thinking like, "What the fuck?" And we laughed about it. But I was like, "Why were you at that party?" And they go, "It was eighteen plus," and I was like, "Fuck! It was eighteen plus." Look, ultimately, they're adults. But I felt a little weird about it. I personally did. So I didn't engage with them again in that regard. But would I do BDSM with them? Sure, I do non-sexual BDSM. Why not? But also, BDSM is sober at the dungeons we went to. There's no drinking allowed. Um, you're not allowed to be on drugs. Like, there's a consent, like, sheets. There's, um, you have, uh, like, um, uh, references. You know what I mean? Like, people watch you at the dungeon. There's, a, there's monitors. People monitor you. So you know what I mean? Like, it's just different. It's a different vibe. That's why I like the dungeons because they're sober and people are watching you in case anything goes wrong. And everybody uses a universal safe word. So if anyone says it, people are listening for it to come get you, you know? Her bio, it, it would make sense to me because I could- And safe words don't necessarily mean anything went wrong. It just means like someone needs to stop because they're too overwhelmed. Safe words are not punishments. They're just communication tools. I see myself going to her profile the first time I wanted to message her and just clicking message and never really going back to her profile and essentially just anytime I interact. If she's malicious, I would expect George to go at hard after her. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he knows that she's 19 and pretty stupid and she's making a mistake. And so he's giving her a chance to come back from this mistake. And I think me too. I think I want to believe in Katie. I think I want to believe she's not malicious and I want to believe she can come back from this. And I want to believe he's not malicious and I want to believe he can come back from this. And I want to believe this is just a mistake and they're about to learn a very hard lesson about it. But I hope they learned the lesson. Direct with her was just through the direct DMs where you actually can't. SW says it would be better for his career to attack her character. I think in some regard, but I actually respect him more for not doing it. I actually think it is so good of him and shows so much maturity and kindness from him that he is dignifying Katie's consciousness. And I like him so much better for it. So if he's trying to win women over, I think he's doing a great job. If he wants to win mature people over, I think he's doing a good job. I think every person that I've seen making fun of Katie and calling her names, fair, but also I don't trust those men. I kind of think less of those men who were kind of mocking Katie and I think if you sent a message to Katie or if you sent her a message saying anything bad to her, I think I think less of you. But also, who cares what Brittany thinks? So I think more of him for being so dignified about it. And I, I'm sure this is hard. But yeah, I think I want to give Katie a chance to redeem herself. The question is, will she? You know? But ultimately, I, I, th I think George is handling this pretty well. I can't see someone's bio. So I actually completely see where she's coming from. And it does seem kind of ridiculous that I didn't know. So because of all this, I actually started to look into this quite a lot because I know that I'm not stupid and must have seen it. But also in my head, I know that I didn't know her age, so it, it conflicts. So today I actually found out there are two different types of professional Instagram account. There's a creator account and a business account. 
And for some reason. Wow, he is autistic. Does he not know anything about his Instagram? Interesting. I mean, I don't know anything about TikTok, so fair. But not and now everyone's on Instagram like that. The reason Casey's account was a business account instead of a creator account. We actually joked about this at the time through our DMs because I was actually able to book her as like a business. And I didn't really know why I was able to do that. And weirdly enough, it actually turns out that business accounts don't display special characters from a username in the username. Shut the fuck up, business. Shut the fuck you. St What's STFU? Shut the fuck up, business. Book now. I can literally book you. What? Yeah, I'm going to need 10 bucks for this convo. Please and thanks. Oh, because it's a business account. Okay. That's displayed. And if you don't know what I mean by special characters, basically just a character that isn't something you can type on a normal keyboard. And because her age and the smiley is a special character, it literally just didn't display in her username at all. And you okay. can actually see this in a picture that I sent to her during our messages. Okay. That her age is not displayed in her name. And yeah, I just like this age thing is like really weird. And ultimately, it just doesn't matter at this point, right? Does it? Does it matter? You can also see this in the screenshots that I used in my previous video that her age also isn't visible, despite the fact you can't say dickhead. That's only for English people. We read this last last video. That her age was in her name at this time, but now actually, as of today. Her account isn't a business account anymore, so her age shows up again. And this is a screenshot I took today. Obviously, this wasn't a feature that I knew about at the time, and I actually had to do quite a bit of research today to work that out. So I hope that could kind of clear that up a little bit and that maybe you can see how... Okay, okay. Okay, okay. I wouldn't have seen it. I actually do think that the age difference between me and Casey was a pretty big factor. I yeah, like, I, I do think ultimately it always is a big factor. And I do think... um I do think like you should be aware of that and you in the future should engage with people. But also ultimately we also have to acknowledge that legally she is 18 and she can make decisions. But even then she did break the law by drinking. So it sounds messy. I am older than her. And based on what she said, I do have more experience than her. She never went into sure. the exact specifics either. So out of respect for Katie, I've chosen not to give any more details than she did. I, for the record, I do think it's, it's cringe when people date 18 when they're over 21. I do. I think if you're over 21, you should be dating people over 21. That's my personal opinion. Um, you can think differently than that. Whatever. I think if you're in your 20s and you're dating someone 10 years or older, you should like wonder about that. I think if you're 30, I don't care what the fuck you do. You're an adult. Good luck. But you know. I do think before 30, there's a lot of nuance for when people are ready to handle their life for real, for real. And then obviously like stuntedness and brain damage goes into further up in age. So like she was freshly 18. And I think there's something about that, that her perspective, I mean, she, again, her age is showing in so many ways, but then so is his. I think people in their 20s are immature, right? So I think, you know, Sneeko's a kid at 26. I think he's a kid at 26. Compared to my 35 in May, they're all kind of kids to me, bro. I, I would feel uncomfortable being with a 26-year-old. That feels so young. You know what I mean? Like, if George, like, George feels like a baby. To, he feels like a little brother to me. Sneeko feels like a little brother to me. They're like little boys to me. They're children. Now, I know they're adults. And the same way Katie's an adult. But also, it's different. I'm getting like little kid vibes. Like I would feel so uncomfortable. Not that I would take away their agency completely. Like I know they're adults. I just feel, Brittany feels like, oh, they're like kids. But they're not literally children. We all understand the difference, right? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So even I at 35 might look at him and be like, oh, I can't. He's 26. But then some people will be like, well, he's 26. What's the big deal? And I'm like, oh, he's 26. No, no, you know, no, no, mm -mm. anything more than a five year age gap. And I'm feeling uncomfortable, you know, not that I'm opposed to technically a larger age gap, but I, I like, you know, five years is a big enough age gap to me. You know what I'm saying? And him and I got nine years. Mm, I'm good, you know, to make sure that I'm not airing out any information that she's not comfortable with being known. But I have clarified that the furthest things went was under the shirt touching. She did say that the level of intimacy that we had together was the furthest that she'd experienced. But to me, it was quite tame. And when I say this, I am not trying to devalue how she feels about this at all. I'm just trying to point out that we clearly viewed things differently. 
And this is something that I have learned from now and I will be taking very seriously moving forward. And I am truly sorry, Katie, for not realizing this and not taking this difference into account. It is clearly something that is extremely important to you. And I'm sorry. Even after everything I've just said. So she's never kissed anybody. She's never taken off her clothes with somebody. Um, so that means she's like a virgin virgin. Like she's never even kissed anybody. You know what I mean? She's never made out with anyone. That's pretty, that's a, that's pretty virginal, bro. What's a super virgin doing at a party drinking? That's interesting. What landed her there? That's a unique experience. That's interesting. So she's never even kissed anybody? That's possible, right? Lots of people get to 19 or 18 and don't kiss anybody. So, okay, that's fair. Interesting, interesting, interesting. <sighs> okay, huh. Yeah, huh. Said things would be very different if I could just say that I had asked her if she was comfortable and she had said yes. But the fact is, I never did ask this. As I mentioned, there were a lot of things that she said she thought that I wasn't aware of that if I had known would have changed a lot. And going forward, this will be something that I take into account in every interaction I have with anyone, sexual or not. I am sorry, Katie, and I am sorry for how this will affect you going forward. And I'm sorry that everything got to this point, but I just hope that after hearing my perspective, you can understand that I never had any bad intentions and never meant to hurt you. I think that is essentially all the information that I can add to the situation. After her first statement, I actually disagreed a lot with how things were portrayed mm. and was pretty confused by a lot of the details. But her most recent response made things a lot clearer to me. And now I do think we agree pretty much on the order of events. We just don't necessarily agree on my intentions. But again, I do really hope that her seeing this can help with that. There are actually a couple of other things that I wanted to mention before I end this video that are not at all as important as anything else I've said before this. But this <clears throat> seems like the right time to address other concerns that people have had. The first thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Ponz's girlfriend at the time, Andy. I was in a call with Ponz and Andy was in the shower and it was known that we could hear Andy as we had brought it up previously within the call. She was talking very sexually with Ponz, essentially complaining that Ponz wasn't leaving the call to go have sex with her. Wait, I'm sorry. I was reading Twitter trying to find Katie's tweets. Hold on. The thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Ponz's girlfriend at the time, Andy. I was in a call with Ponz and Andy was in the shower and it was known that we could hear- I- what? Why, do I, why can't I hear him? The first thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Ponz's girlfriend- Puns is this other streamer boy with blonde hair. That's all I know about him. His girlfriend. At the time, Andy. I was in a call At with the time, Puns Andy. And Andy was in the shower. Andy was in the shower. And it was known that we could hear Andy as we had brought it up previously within the call. She was talking very sexually with Puns, essentially complaining that Puns wasn't leaving the call to go have sex with her in the shower. I don't remember the exact quote that I said, but this is what Andy quotes me saying. If you don't go in the shower and have sex with Andy, I will. I do remember saying something along these lines, essentially saying, come on puns, go have sex with your girlfriend who's begging you to go have sex okay. with her in the shower or someone else will. But I do understand how this could be disrespectful and that was not my intention. I mean, it's contextual. It's only offensive if the people find it offensive. At all. Knowing how she felt after the fact, I do feel bad and I am sorry to both Puns and Andy for this comment. My friends, including Puns, we often say ridiculous things. But like if any, only the people in the situation are allowed to be offended. Nobody else. So it's contextual. And that's just our type of banter. If anyone ever said something to me about me making them uncomfortable, I would obviously do my best to try avoid making them uncomfortable. But Andy wasn't really one of my friends, so it makes more sense that she doesn't really know that's the type of way that I joke around. And I hope that she understands that I didn't mean any harm by it. Finally, something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time, but have never done, is the Technoblade charity stream situation. People were upset that I was playing soundboards during the beginning of the stream. For context, this event care about this. wasn't intended to be serious or sad. It was... A Okay, SW, I will ban you if you keep pushing a narrative that isn't true. We have no information that says it was more than a waste touch. And you've been on stream this whole time. And I know your comments. You tend to be a little bitch, in my opinion, because you tend to be 
very bubbled and it annoys me because you say a lot of shit about people that might not be true. And I will ban you from chat. We have no reason to believe anything else happened between Katie and George. Neither person have talked about it. You are inferring so much. And if you keep pushing false narratives out here, I will just ban you because it's pissing me off. Okay. Like we have no reason to think more that happened than him touching his, her waist. Unless I see something else. And by the way, at this point, it doesn't matter. At this point, you've already had too many times to tell more details. So, well, he did say his hand went up her shirt. That doesn't mean anything. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It has to mean something. Okay? That has to mean something. Okay? Her, his hand went up her shirt could mean so many things. That doesn't mean anything. Again, assuming makes an ass out of you and me. If we're mad at George for assuming she was into it, we should be mad at ourselves for assuming details. All the, If she's never even kissed a guy before and she's saying this is her first time and the furthest she's ever gone, what does that even mean? Both of them have said his hand moved up, nothing more. Cool. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. I don't care. I don't care if you honka honked her boobed. I don't care what he did. The point is, is that none of it is technically morally wrong unless... There's some idea of detail that we find morally wrong. It, I'm so sick of it. Like, I'm so sick of it. I either want some fucking details or I want no inference. Okay? A purse shirt <clears throat> could be so many things. Okay? So many things. I don't, I'm sick of it. Okay? If I see any more fucking comments, I'm going to block you, bro. A for fun event and to celebrate the memory of Technoblade. A narrative that- No, it doesn't make sense. SW says, if we assume it was a little bit more than the waist, her freak out makes sense. Her ki his kindness makes sense. No, it doesn't. Even if he honka honked her boobs, even if he reached up and grabbed her tits, it wouldn't change anything. Because it all makes sense within the context. But at the same time, like we're not, they're not even saying that. Like we didn't even say that. You're making too much assumption. It could, she could just be overwhelmed. She could have this response because she was molested as a child and it's triggering her now. She could have this response because she's genuinely so virginal. She's never kissed anybody. She could have this response for a lot of reasons and he could just be compassionate because he's a nice person. You know what I mean? Like SW, you're going to stop whether you like it or not. Don't threaten people in my chat. Okay. Like, again, it doesn't matter what it was. What matters is how people felt about how it was and how we can talk about preventing this in the future or how we can consent to these situations in general. We're not going to consent to reading minds. Do not read people's minds. Do not play these mind games with people. Okay? So that's it. Okay? They could have had sex that night and it still would have been or could have been consensual. The fact that none of that even happened, I'm so over it. They literally could have had sex that night and I still would have been like, still could have been consensual, bro. So again, like I don't even want to hear it when literally the only thing we know that they've done is touch each other a little bit up the shirt, barely. I don't even know what we're talking about. Are we pretending that no one touched her waist or back? So you're banned. You're banned. Bye. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. I swear he just trolls. I swear. I swear. Okay? Obviously, Katie's fucked. Something about her brain is fucked. Maybe she had trauma earlier. Maybe this was too intense. She was real crying on those streams. That was either the most amazing acting I've ever seen or this girl is seriously being impacted. She needs fucking help. And Katie deserves to get... Nobody deserves anything. Katie is entitled. Mm, nobody's entitled to anything. Katie should get that help. Mm, look at me correcting my language. Katie needs to get help because regardless of how you feel about it, nobody can cry that good on stream unless they are an amazing actress. So there's something fucking wrong here. Okay. And either George is taking us for a loop and fucking manipulating all of us or Katie, something is wrong. Something is a fucking lie and one of you are, is lying or both of you are lying or all of you are lying. All I know is this is not my bubble and I'm not your fucking friend and I don't give a fuck about any of you personally. So to be fair, I'm just having fun observing your bubble and making money off of you. Thank you for liking the stream, guys. Shout out.
was massively spread. With How many that. times have you seen her original video? Once. What am I, a fucking sadist? Why would I watch it again? What am I, a masochist? Why would I watch it more than once? Well, I've seen it twice, technically, because I watched Papa Gut watch it. I played the soundboard during Techno Dad's speech. What is this? So, obviously, I'm Nobody not fucking cares, George. Okay, thanks, George, for that input. Beautiful. Riveting. Okay, let's find this fucking... What's Katie's name? Okay, Katie, 100,000 plus followers. Love that for her. She dressed up as a ladybug. We love it. Okay, for now, goodbye. This is like her proof of things that happened. Okay. So this was the post she put out that George read some of it. For now, this is what I have to say. This is from Katie herself. He admitted to touching me that I was drunk, that I would verbally did not, didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over. He said silence is not equa equal consent yet. Yeah, I think she's delusional in the nicest way possible. I think, I think she, I think she's coming from a bubble that is making a prescription that isn't universal or makes sense. She was also an 18 year old who broke the law to drink. End of story. You broke the law. You're the criminal. What now? It's like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense for her to use that as like reasoning. And also he admitted to touching me. Yeah, your grandma could admit to touching you and you could be upset with her. Are you going to call the cops on your grandma, bro? Like, again, the context is too. It's unfair to paint George as a predator, given the context, given the context. That's what we're looking for is the context. Okay. Number one, never got verbal confirmation from me. Okay, pretty common in most bubbles. Love that she wants verbal confirmation. She probably should have made a different decision in a lot of her actions that night if she expected a verbal confirmation, right? So to be fair, she did admit she is willing to sell out um, for clout and views, which kind of ruins her whole premise, right? She's kind of amber hurting this in my opinion. Two, Chose to move to a sexual act on the couch when everyone was hanging out without asking. Um, not sure what the sexual act is, but okay, fair. I don't know how those two facts coexist. How can I consent when there's no question? How can I consent when drunk? How can he consent when drunk? If he is also drunk, how do we know he's consenting? How do we know Katie didn't take advantage of George given his inebriated state? And given all the context for the situation, since nobody else thought it was really uncomfortable in a way that made sense within context enough to stop it from happening, I'm not sure that anyone really thought anything was happening. But if something was happening and people thought it was happening, then all the people in that room that saw it happen, happening and was uncomfortable are now all complicit in the crime. So for alleging a crime took place, then everyone involved who was in any way concerned or showed concern afterwards is now responsible and complicit in letting the crime occur. The crime started with her drinking underage. The crime continued with whoever provided the alcohol. Then the crime continued with anyone who witnessed the alleged a sexual assault that she's claiming. And then it continued with her choosing to stay in the situation, which actually negates all of the unconsent to, and consenting because then she said she consented to it. Wait, now I'm confused. Guilty. Adjourned. Plaintiff. Defendant. What? Okay, I don't know. Okay, I prepared proof on the idea that he wouldn't admit to it, that he would deny touching me or being there, but he admitted to it, that I was drunk, and he touched me in front of everyone. You mean that you were both drunk and you both fooled around on the couch? That I never said yes, nor did he ask, and yet I'm still asked for a response, proof, and explanations. Well, because most consent isn't given verbally right now. That's not the norm in society. Right? Like, it is not the norm in society to ask for explicit consent. And even when you do, people might still feel pushed into it. So it's not even a perfect method, but I do recommend it personally. So again, what bubble are you in? What cultural expectation are we in? You know, if you go to a Muslim country that expects you to wear hijab and then you're not wearing hijab, you're kind of the fucking idiot in the room. You're the idiot, right? Like respect people's cultural differences. And at the same time, if you already know you're breaking the law drinking, right? You already know the situation. You already admitted you were willing to do it for clout and views, right? And she didn't also verbalize a no because she was willing to stay for clout and views. That's what she admitted to. So let's keep reading. Um, frankly, I think it's fucking insane. I mean, agree to disagree. 
If you still need more after hearing he, how he, him admit that two simple facts, then nothing I can say is going to change your mind. But here it is anyway. Addressing the stream. As for the iMessages he showed outside of Insta DMs, all proof of him showing a group chat he wasn't even in, showing messages from my friends, which isn't me. The only message showing a response for me when we asked about the drinking game we played, question mark. That was after we played it the first night, the night where nothing happened. I liked the game and wanted to play it in play it with other friends at the convention so i asked for the same name don't know how that's relevant to anything hmm i don't know mm. why i went back because my friends want to i went with them everywhere they went that trip i would also like to clear up all up clear up that all this happened when i went back nothing happened the first night okay we got that something i also did not admit at first because it was embarrassing and thought irrelevant. But the second night, another reason I was willing to go back was I heard from a, I heard of a different creator who was in the room that I wanted to meet. But when I found out that they had left an hour earlier, I was already I was already in the Uber. I had forgotten this until looking back at the text when I said this to a friend the other day. Okay, why didn't you just get back into the Uber and leave? Right? Okay, what is this? Instant DMs. Ghosty back to dreams room C. Okay. Brought me brought me and Ghosty back to the dream. Okay. They were all fine. The instant DMs. They were all fine. Like I said in my stream, I did have my age in my bio. Like it to this, like it is to this day. The messages were nothing insane, just banter. Like I said, I admitted to messaging him after. I never hid the fact. I'm still considering myself lucky for what happened to me, even if I was uncomfortable and didn't ask for it. I was hating myself around now, thinking I was ungrateful, but as you can see, nothing insane. Or proof worthy being said, just banter. Okay. Again, I felt lucky to be taking, talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while. She, did she get a drunk, famous Minecraft YouTuber drunk on purpose to take advantage of him? Is that what I'm, is that what she's saying? I'm being hyperbolic. You know. So she already said she's cloud chasing. She already said she's excited. She already said she was willing to do it for views. And now she's saying, okay, I was uncomfortable with what happened, but trying to swallow it and suck it up as I didn't have any knowledge. Suck it up so I didn't have to acknowledge or accept it. Although our texting ended a month after, I can see why people find me at fault, but then, pro but then, but the thought process of someone who went through what I have is very uniquely, a very unique experience, which is why I understand why it seems stupid. Only to so many people, only, oh my God, only so many people have, been in it to understand okay that's could be fair that could be fair I know people who are graped and they end up talking to their grapist after as if to play cool I have seen that happen okay okay George not found are there any good ones also messaging IAG messaging lame what's your snap okay but we did not Snapchat much at all because I don't use Snapchat. I haven't since around middle school. The most that happened were a few pictures with him and a quesadilla that he sent me then I, okay, first of all, quesadilla sounds so good right now. Then he sent me, then I retort, restore, resorted back to DMs. Okay, resorted back to DMs, girl, which didn't last long. The time we were all stopped interacting was around Paris TwitchCon. I walked, I walked him to the elevator. We left at the same time. My room was on the other side of the floor in the hotel. You had a hallway of rooms on one side, elevators connecting them, then the other hall, and I was on the opposite side. Therefore, I had to walk through the elevator room. I didn't walk him there. We both headed in that direction. I said, well, bye. And then when he did, the whole elevator is broken bit. Okay. The unmentioned friend. There was a man who was there that I left out. He wasn't there for long. He left early. This text message was proven wrong, so we're going to ignore that. We cuddled. Next section. Here we go. A lot of the touch was initiated by him. Does that mean some was initiated by her? A lot of the touch was initiated by him. Does that mean some was initiated by her? Probably not realizing it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left and I faced ghosty to my right. Because he was drunk. Why didn't anyone stop George and protect George? He was drunk. Why didn't she think to protect George? Probably because they're all drunk. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but just me being drunk, everyone on the couch was doing the same. All drunk, close together. But I get it. I was drunk. That's what I'm saying. Habibi, listen to you. If you're all drunk, 
and you're all on the couch having a nice time, and you're all cuddling together. Yeah. Yeah. If this is uncomfortable for you, you need to leave the situation. You need to say something. These are your friends, right? Say, hey, guys, I love you, but, like, can you not touch me there? You would think, like, again, guys, if these are your friends or if they're people you trust, don't get drunk with people you don't trust. If she's making the claim she never knew him, if she's making the claim they were never friends, why would you get drunk together in an enclosed hotel room? You know what I mean? Like, just as, like, a big sister to, like, younger people, don't drink with people you don't trust. Don't drink without a plan B. Make sure people know where you're at. Contact your mothers if you have to. Right? Like, with peace and love, I want, I want everyone to be safe. I want everyone to have a good time. I want everyone to just enjoy their 20s and their life and figure out drinking and having fun and all of that shit. And the best way to do it properly is to have a sober buddy, have a ride home, have someone pick you up at a certain time, have rules set in place before you get drunk, be safe who you're going to drink. Think about it. They've all decided to get drunk with each other and they all trusted each other. And that was a mistake on everyone's, like everyone made a mistake. George made a mistake getting drunk with her. She made a mistake getting drunk with him. Right? Silly says they met at that first party. So the night before... So they met prior and everything went great, I guess. I don't know. I'm a little confused on that too. But either way, like she just said it, everybody was doing it. So wouldn't it make sense that he would also do it? Doesn't that make sense? They'd all like maybe see where things went. You know what I mean? Like I'm not excited about the age gap. I'm not excited about people drinking, but like you're all adults. I have to trust you to some extent to do your business. You thought you were mature enough to drink, right? Maybe not. You know, Silly says, I'm the sober mom dragging people out of parties. Literally, you got to have a sober person come and drag you out, you know, but you have to consent for, which maybe when you're drunk, you, you revoke consent, which is very complicated, right? Um, okay. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it was going to turn sexual, which is fair, but just so you know, in certain co context bubbles, that is usually the next step. In some bubbles. And if you don't want that to be the way it is, you need to make sure that the people you're with also agree to that. Right? Layla says in the first video, she said he flirted with her and she was confused because of the age gap and made her feel weird. Then there should have been a conversation. Right? But again, she said she stayed for clout. So, okay. You know. Um... So this is what I read on stream already, right? All because he assumed things and assumed he had the right and I'm a shy person. We don't know that George assumed anything. I think they were just drunk, you know? She could have moved. Yes, I got up and I sat back in the same spot. Listen to this. And this is where I'm going to end because like genuinely after this, I just don't think anything really matters, right? She could have moved. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot getting up to drink more, etc. Mentally, I believe in a room on a sofa with people on it you just sit back where you were when you got up. Okay, well, that's your fault. Mentally, not fault. I don't want to play this fault. That is a mistake. Mentally, I was also drunk. So was he. And even if I were to move, that would be an obvious hit to his ego. Not obvious. Nobody would think that. I don't think George would think anything of that. It would be a hit, a huge hit to his ego, um, to his ego, to him, and everyone in the room. It, nobody knows that, right? A bold move I didn't need to make. I could just deal with it till the night was over and I didn't want someone I had watched for a long time or a long while, sorry, watched for a while and with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. I didn't want to embarrass myself or hit him or myself. I know it's dumb thought process. I acknowledge it. Okay, wait, hold on. We have to keep going then because I want to read the line about what I was willing to do. Hold on. I could just deal with it. Okay. She stayed with her friends. I didn't make the conscious decision to choose to stay. My friend left throwing up in her hand ugh, and I didn't know. She was so drunk she couldn't hold her vomit in and passed out in, the, in our bathroom. And the more the night went on, the drunker I was, like I said, and I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big content creators. I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big content creators. 
Those last three points, I may remind you, are not an invitation to be sexual and that I wanted it. And if he thought that, he could have asked. Okay. I think that's it. Like with peace and love, here's my thing. I think I'm seeing a pattern in her psychology. I'm not a therapist, but I am seeing a pattern of her making a lot of assumptions for people. She's she's like writing, she's making a lot of assumptions for people. And genuinely, I think she might just be wrong. You know, like I think that just might be wrong. You're, you assumed a lot of malicious intent. You assume a lot, like we could assume the same of you, but here's why I think what think here's what I think happened. I think a young girl. I don't know where she learned this. So okay, so now I have questions on who raised her. Who are her parents? Right? So now I have a lot of questions about who her parents are and who raised her and why does she think this about people and who taught her this is how people act? Why did you know what I mean? Who raised her? Maybe what kind of TV shows was she watching? I'm trying to figure out why is she making such horrible assumptions of George and everyone's like out to get her? But then she said, and again, I think this is what's so damning. And I want to like, I want to think the best of Katie, but this is so damning. I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big content creators or such big creators. So you consented. This is, this is what consent is. You're saying I'm willing to stay to get the clout and the access. But you never had to do that in the first place. So what in Katie's brain made her think this is what she had to do? Like wh who taught her that? Was it a friend? Was it YouTube? Was it her mother, father? Like who taught Katie? Like, oh yeah, in order to be friends with these people, in order to get clout or do business, I have to be uncomfortable. I wonder what would have happened if Katie said, oh, hey, George, if it's okay, like, I really don't want you to touch me. And he'd be like, oh, my God. Or would George be like, what the fuck, bitch? <laughs> Rape. I feel like George would have been like, I'm so, I'm embarrassed. I'm so sorry. And then they would have separated. She could have just said, hey, George, can you not touch me? But George was drunk and she was drunk. So she couldn't consent she was drunk. Then why would he be able to consent if he was drunk? Nothing happened. But if what happened was enough, then you need to like radically accept that you went into this situation, you drank underage, like under 21, you broke the law and you did it going in knowing you were willing to do whatever it took to get clout. That's not good. I don't know, but like it sounds, I don't know this Katie person, but it sounds like if I had to put her into a category of person, she's either incredibly number driven and like focused on him being famous or she's super, super naive and someone has convinced him of convinced her of his malicious intent, which doesn't exist. I would love for victims to be heard and I would love for predators to be taken down. I'm not seeing predator and I'm not quite seeing victim, but I am seeing mental instability and I am seeing poor judgment on George's end. George made a lot of poor choices that night and I think so did Katie. But what's concerning to me is Katie's desire, right, to paint him with malicious intent without reading his mind. So if George was meant to read her, like shouldn't have read her mind, he she can't read his. Like if Katie's upset that George attempted to read her mind about her consent, then Katie cannot read his mind about his, his, his malicious intent. So the problem is, is like they're both reading each other's minds and getting it wrong. They're both doing things that are incorrect and probably illegal because I'm assuming he supplied some of the alcohol. Maybe he did it. Maybe it was just Dream. And in that case, Dream is an idiot and you need to drop him as a friend because Dream was willing to supply alcohol to people under 21 he didn't know. Like whoever supplied alcohol to these girls, they're so fucking dumb. Don't supply alcohol to people you don't know who are under 21. Right? So again, I'm, I, I just think there's like so much messiness here. And I think both of them should probably go to therapy and both of them should probably stop hanging out with whoever got them in this situation. And if they are completely responsible for getting themselves in this situation, they should break up with themselves. I think that's my final uh, thoughts on this story. I'm over it. Any thoughts? I'm over it. I'm over it. This is not, this is, this is sad. I'm bummed when people are in these situations. I want the best for the world. But the world isn't perfect. It's messy and it will get ugly. And you need to 
be aware of that. So I don't know what to say. Do you guys have any thoughts? Layla says it's odd that she thought it was enough that he touched her. Wait, it's odd that she thought it was enough that he touched her. Then why leave out the context? Because it was a narrative where everything needed to be as bad as possible. Mm. Valerie says, weren't they drunk before they got to Dream's room? But I, but they kept drinking in the room. So they kept drinking. She, kept, she said she got up to get more alcohol. So they provided them with alcohol as well, right? Which was very stupid, you know? Tripp says, George made reasonable choices, though. I mean, did he? Did he? Is it reasonable to get drunk with people you don't know who are under the age of 21? Oh, I guess George didn't know. Okay, if George didn't know she was under 21, then in George's defense, that is pretty reasonable to get drunk with people. But then you don't know them. So maybe the issue is getting drunk with girls in a hotel room you don't know. Like, don't know personally. Ah, but then they knew, um, I don't know. They, he, mm, he didn't make the worst judgment call. I think he made a pretty normative judgment call. It, maybe not the best, but I think pretty normative. What do you think? Silly says, if she can't even sit somewhere else when already up, how would she have been able to say no if he did ask explicit, explicit, explicit verbal consent? That's a good question. Some people think once you're drunk, you can't consent. But I think if that's the case, then George can't consent either. You know? Yeah, Wordu says, I'm pretty sure they assumed she was over 21 because it was supposed to be a 21 over party and her friends who are over 21 brought her there. Yeah, so I think that's fine for George to make the assumption she's 21. Um, You know, even if he checks IDs, what if they're fake? Jeez. Star says, if I were in charge of events, I wouldn't let her back because of the underage drinking. Yeah, probably not, right? Chris says, I want to believe she's just naive, but her first response was so hostile. Mm. You know, I want to, I want to hope the best for Katie, but at the same time, like I wouldn't trust her and I don't trust, honestly, George is like, I don't know. I don't know. Like a part of me is like, whatever got you into this mess, delete it from your life. Tico says, wasn't the one unnamed friend of Katie dating dream or something? It's not like that total strangers coming together here. That's true too. I think they were friends of friends. So to be fair, they did kind of know each other. Okay. Another reasonable point for George to assume it was safe. Yeah. Trib says people still get fake IDs in 2024. Oh, yeah, girl. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Alex says hotel rooms after a con seem similar to house parties hopping on college campuses. Like there's an assumed similar niche of people. I agree with that. Not everybody knows about the bubble. Not everybody knows how to act. You know what I mean? I want explicit to consent to be normal. But I also just don't think that's how most people want to operate necessarily. So, again, call me a prude. But I think you need to have a sober driver and I think you should have an emergency phone call that someone calls you and make sure you're okay. And I think, like I said, I told you guys during COVID, I'm in my 30s. During COVID, I went on a date with a guy from Bumble and my sister couldn't get a hold of me. So she called the restaurant we were at because I told her what restaurant we'd be at. And she asked the waitress to come get me so she could check if I was okay. I'm in my 30s. It was a midday lunch. We were sober. But I was meeting a man off the internet and my sister wanted to make sure he didn't kill me. So call it paranoid. But, you know, I will go to any length necessary to protect myself, even if it's a little socially uncomfortable. Because I learned the hard way. Because I was assaulted, right? So I learned the hard way many times in my life. I was assaulted once. But I learned many different ways of how people might not have the best intentions. And so I learned my lesson. I'm asking you to learn your lesson. Because if you don't, you'll repeat the mistake. All of, everybody needs to learn the lesson. Katie's mom paid for Ghosty's VidCon trip so she could chaperone her. Well, Katie's mom needs to give Katie a whooping for not, you know what I mean? Or give Ghosty a whooping. I'm not sure who deserves a whooping more, you know? Discord said bold of her to assume his ego could not handle it or would not handle it. And now that his ego is how she imaged. That's imagine. Sorry. That's that's the problem. She kept saying like George's ego can't take the rejection. How do you know that? Did you talk to him about it? Did you get his consent? Did you have the conversation? Did you ask George like, hey, like, is it like, don't touch me like that or don't even be nice. George, get your fucking hands off me, bro. But she wasn't she was willing to put up with it. Her words to hang out with bigger YouTubers. 
Hmm? Allison says, I just wonder why she felt it was something she had to go through for clout. That's, I would love, to, who told her that? Who told Katie that these boys would only hang out with her if she stayed silent? Who, who, why is that the reputation? What's happening? What are we missing from the story? You know? I just, I want to know that. What was the narrative there? You know, that's the, I think that's always going to be the confusing part for me is like, why do you think that about people? Like, what evidence do you have? Usually if I form a poor opinion of someone, they've, they've personally told me why I should have that opinion. I don't care what other people say. I care about what they, you know what I mean? What they have told me about their own actions. And people tell you a lot about themselves, girls. Let me tell you. Alex says also, it's not your job, Katie, to cater to anyone, especially a man's fifis, especially a man's fifis. Say it again, especially a man's fifis. Silly says that's the problem with yelling victim blaming when asking people to take accountability for their choices. We make that leads to you getting hurt. Well, or hurt, hurt. Excuse me. I will say, again, we want to be able to hold people accountable without victim blaming. I don't want to point fault at Katie. I don't want to point fault at George. I just want to say, hey, it looks like the universe has blessed you with a life lesson. Are you going to learn that lesson? Because one of you is lying. Okay, this is like a philosophy moment for us. You know how Catholics, Christians, Muslims, religious people will say, like, God knows everything. God knows the truth. He knows. Like, you can lie, but you can't lie to God. I would love to be that God right now who could, like, know the truth. See, that's the problem with perception is we have a relationship with truth based off that perception. And there is an objective here, but does anyone have access to it? George can't read her mind. She can't read his. We can't read their minds. We weren't there. We do not know if any of this is true. What if they got together and decided to make up this whole story so they could blow up and get clout? We don't even know if they're in cahoots together. What if they have 10 kids together? We wouldn't even know. We are just experiencing other people's experiences. And I wish sometimes I could be that God on the wall who's like, oh, I see you all, bitch. I'm reading your minds, bitch. You know what I mean? Because there is an objective somewhere. I just don't think anyone has access to that perception. I wish. So I spend my life, if you guys are new to my work especially, being so curious about what is the objective. But since I'm pretty sure we can't see it out of perception, it's like a curious journey where I'm like, I wonder what really happened. I wonder what really happened. I wonder what people were really thinking and feeling. If I could just get into George's mind, I could see what his intent was. If I could get into Katie's mind, I could see what her intent was. And we can't. So instead, we have to make assumptions towards evidence that's likely because of the trail that was left behind. And we could still be wrong. We could still be wrong. You know? We could be wrong. Kenzie says, I worry because I have boys. You should worry because you have kids regardless of gender. If they're women, they're more than likely to be raped. And if they're men, they're more than likely to be raped or accused. Yeah. Whether you have men or women, they're, they're going to experience, I think, 1 in 20 men and 1 in 10 girls are assaulted. I could be wrong on the numbers, but something like that. You should be worried regardless of the gender of your children. And you should teach your children to hang out with better people in which they will not do that. And then they will get in trouble and then they will either learn the lesson or they won't. Been there, done that, girl. Been there, done that. We all have to learn the lessons the hard way, you know? Yes, to be a fly on the wall, Ugh, girl. To be on the, a fly on the wall would be so interesting, you know? Kenzie says, what about this generation who all believe she was sexually assaulted? I mean, they're allowed to have their opinions. Conservatives think trans people are grooming kids. Everyone is entitled to have a stupid opinion. Everyone is entitled to have a stupid opinion. It's the way of the world. The whole world has been built on stupid ideas. And here we are talking about YouTube drama. You know? George should reach out to me. I'd love to talk to him. Kitty should reach out to me. I'd love to talk to her. I'll get to the bottom of it. Talk to me. You know? But ultimately, I think these people need therapists. You know? <laughs> we made it. We truly did. Humanity made it, guys. You know? Ugh. <sighs> It is what it is. But yeah, if he lost friends during this process, he should. Uh, so he can start making better ones. 
And I think for everyone that may have put him in this situation, he should lose those friends too. I think anyone who supplied those girls with alcohol, they, you know. Silly says this stupid opinion is ruining his career. That's life. He made a decision. He's going to learn the lesson. That's what I'm saying. He will learn this lesson or he won't. But this is the universe teaching him a lesson. You want to talk about introspection? This is George's opportunity to be very introspective about why he was in that situation in the first place and why this type of, type of girl is rampant in his space and why the online communities might be the worst thing for him. It is a part of growing up. The world will come for you. People will try to destroy your career. This won't be the last time George has a story like this happen because it's just a part of being on the internet. So now it's time. It's time for him to learn the lesson, right? And that's life. It's unfair. Life was never fair, never has been, and never will be. So learn the lesson. No one is coming to save you. Bryson said, we said or he won't at the same time. Exactly, girl. Layla says, will you watch Katie's finishing statement? What's that? Did she put out a YouTube video? Did she put out a video? Did she put out a... I would love to watch a follow-up. Did she put it out? She didn't put it out, right? Hold on, let's check. No, right? She doesn't have... She doesn't have a new one, right? Layla, can you tell me? Will you watch Katie's finishing statement? I don't see... It's not out yet. Yeah, if she if she puts out one out, of course, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, I'll definitely watch it, of course, you know. Yeah, I'll watch it. Um. Okay, I think that's all for tonight, guys. I think that's it. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? Layla says she said she would take a break and come back in a week. Okay, I hope she does. I hope she talks to somebody. I hope she talks to a therapist. I hope she talks to somebody. Katie and George, you can slide into my DMs. I would absolutely love to be an ear to both of you um, because I personally think I could help them. I think I'm non-judgmental enough and I believe in both of their abilities to move on from this. Katie's so young. She's 19. I don't want this to ruin her whole life. And George is so young. He's 26. I don't want this to ruin his whole life. So I, I think they could both come back from this. I think they could learn from this. You know what I mean? I think they should definitely not let this decide their whole life. But it's going to be a very hard lesson to learn regardless. You know, you can't just do something like this and, you know, move on. You usually have to do something. Not as, forget what the mob wants. Forget what the bubbles want. I don't care what they believe is justice. What needs to happen between Katie and George is something like deeply life-changing, you know, so they can learn the mistake. They can learn the lesson. Discord says this whole ordeal makes me frustrated because part of her story resonates with mine. Mm hmm. Only I was a kid and he was my uh, slightly older cousin. And the touching was not just touching the stomach area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a story that resonates. It is a story that sounds so true, but untrue at the same time, because of just the, like the level of severity. But to be honest with you, this is also just a very common story in the world of drinking and consent and relationships. And I really want people to understand, like, you know, for some people, this is like their every weekend and they look forward to it. They look forward to getting drunk and not knowing where they are and having random people touching them. And for some people, that's their nightmare. And that is a very hard reality. We all have to, like, accept. We have to accept that some people, maybe for unhealthy reasons, want to be drunk at a party where they don't know anyone else's name and strangers are touching them now the consent part is that they want it so that's the consent element right the difference here is that if you don't want it you have to explicitly say that in some of these spaces because it's confusing to people who also watch tv shows and learn i was raised this way that if alcohol is involved so is something else unless you talk about it beforehand so with peace and love you have to know the culture you're in, the expectation of behavior. Even in Croatia, I'm learning that like, oh, I can't dress a certain way here because it's not expected. And people will look at me funny if I dress that way. 
I'm in a foreign land. I'm a foreign person in a foreign land. I need to respect the customs of the area. Drinking culture is different. Expectation is different. Like people treat you different. I have to be aware of that. I have, I have to be aware of that because I'm the stranger in the area. I'm the guest, right? So in this situation, I really feel like Katie was saying I was the guest. Then it's on you to learn the customs, you know? Silly says, Katie's first telling of the story was close to something that happened to me when I was only 16. Her second version was a lot less similar. Yeah, it's difficult. The first story, like I said, those tears were real. I felt a lot of pain from Katie. Unless she's an amazing actress, something obviously happened. But I'm not sure it was that night with George. I'm kind of heavily convinced she has some childhood trauma that got exacerbated in the George situation. That's my theory. That's my concern. I, you know, it's interesting to me that she's never even kissed somebody being 18. Because that's a very unique experience. I would love to know more about that. How she never kissed anybody. I mean, God, I had my first kiss at nine with another, you know, he was 10. You know what I mean? August 6th, pecked on the lips. Thank you. At my best friend's house by one of our best friends. <laughs> and, uh, and then I had a little, you know, a little high school girlfriend. She kissed me. I kissed her. And I was homeschooled. And I, you know what I mean? Like, what? What an interesting lived experience. I'm not even doubting it. Lots of people reach 40 and I've never kissed anybody. But I'm curious about her story. Maybe she's a femme cell. Maybe she came from purity culture. Maybe she just didn't like anyone. Maybe she's asexual. Maybe she's demi. There could be lots of reasons. But I do think it's kind of interesting that she's never even done anything more. Because I would personally assume kissing is considered more than touching under the shirt. I don't know. Jane says, girl, I was 18 when I had my first kiss. Let's go, Jane. Let's go. I was fat and ugly. Pfft, girl. <laughs> girl. Bryson says, I had my first kiss at 22. Repressed homo life. Let's go. Love that. Okay. See, there's, see what, would, so what's Katie's reasoning? I wonder what Katie's story was. You know what I mean? Maybe, like I said, purity culture. Maybe she was just like at home all the time. Maybe she never left the house. Maybe she was homeschooled. I would love to hear Katie's story. That's what I'm saying. What a unique story. And then to go from never kissing anyone to like drinking at a party. Yeah, that can feel really intense. Damn, Discord. My first kiss was straight with tongue, baby. I was six and he was seven. Damn, we were playing movies. Movies wild, right? I love that. Let's go. Look, I'm not here to doubt her story. I don't have to. That's the thing. We don't have to doubt Katie's story. We just have to have a conversation about the perception of the situation. That's it. We don't have to doubt Katie's story. Her and George already confirmed it. What we're doubting here is the intentionality. It didn't seem like George was malicious. It didn't seem like Katie understood that. Why do you think there was that miscommunication? Why was there such a miscommunication between Katie's perception and George's perception? Nobody has to be the bad guy for bad things to happen, guys. Nobody has to be the bad guy for bad things to happen. That is the greatest life lesson I've ever had to learn. Because it's really tempting to put blame and fault. It's really tempting to take sides. I take no one's side. I'm your mother. I take no one's side. I'm your older sister. I only say there is actual truth here. And the closest to truth will bring us all peace. So let's fucking find out what that is. And it's not about the details, huh? Shout out to Jordan Peterson. It's about what brings you closer to the understanding. So it's not about the details. They're both giving details. Katie did this. George did this. I don't care. I want to know how to get to the constructive part. How do we get to the realness, the truth of the situation? That is going to be much harder to get to. Yeah. You know? Ah, oh, Kenzie says, these are the questions I will ask my son when I show him his sto this story. He's 17 and has autism. Let's go, autistic representation bros. We love the autists. We love them. I have a podcast coming up uh, with a great content creator who makes content um, for people on the spectrum. Fucking love it. I'm stoked. Shout out to the Thought Spot. Uh, we're really excited to do this collab together. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, yeah, neurodivergency plays a role in this. How we talk to people, how we read cues. How we understand, you know, what people are going through. How we understand bubbles. 
All of this plays into it. Who we are, what culture we've come from, how old we, everything, guys. It's not just autism. It's your gender. It's how you were raised. It's, it's everything, you know? Anyways. Okay, guys, that's it. That's, we're going to end it on there. Okay. Shout out to the thought spot. Shout out to George and Katie. Th shout out to my mom. You know? I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool